Anthony and I podcast back for another episode. Frankie C in the house. What's up, my friend? What's happening? Let's run down the list. Prince Andrew going to be served. The Pope chiming in on the whole vaccine thing. Rolling Stone names the 500 greatest songs of all time. Probably not going to be any issue with that list. Nikki Minaj uh, Megan Fox and Daddy. The Bodyguard remake. We'll remember the great Norm Macdonald and the civilian space launch is happening. Uh, same time as our podcast. So we'll cover all that and so much more. Sounds like a plan. Not to mention that we're brought to you by our good pals over at Jumpstart Coffee Company. We'll talk about those guys in a second. <laughs> Got mine. People love Jiminy the Cricket, by the way, last episode. He's going to be huge one day. And mm. as long as we get a little credit, just a little credit. Just a little bit. Uh, remember, you discovered him on this show. Uh, huge news, Frank. Huge news. Feels like Prince Andrew's going down because uh, we had that little lawyer conference on Monday. Uh, we didn't think that uh, any sort of representative would show up for Prince Andrew. They He wound up having an attorney. The attorney did check in. The attorney was like, hey, this is, you know, BS and he hasn't been served and he doesn't need to be served and he can't be served and he's the prince and blah, 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 blah. Uh, the high court over there in, um, in uh, Great Britain, they actually at first said that they weren't going to serve him. Then there was an argument that he was, uh, he got um, immunity because of the sweetheart deal that Epstein made. Remember that was a deal that it was like you and he only, was included on the, in that. Like everybody was in, like you could get in on it if you really wanted to. Like that. That kind is of, a crazy. How does anybody swing that deal? It could be. I feel like because of this, because they knew who was at stake, and so they got that sweetheart deal. Which, by the way, in an odd twist of faith, this feels like it's the best case scenario for Clinton. Like this feel like as we watching this go down, like when you give such a blanket immunity to epstein and all his friends you know obviously somebody powerful there was pulling the strings to get that sweetheart deal and you look at who that could possibly be and it's really either the president or the prince and as the prince continues to be tracked down it kind of feels more and more like it's him yeah but it looks like i mean Maybe it didn't cover Prince Andrew because if he's going down now. Well, it didn't because, yeah, exa that's exactly what happened. So yeah, uh, the high court said that, um, you know, there wasn't enough evidence. They weren't going to intervene, uh, so on and so forth. Then all of a sudden, the lawyers for Virginia Roberts Jeffrey uh, presented some more information. And the high court was like, oh, OK, yes. Where was we this? <laughs> Yeah. Present it all. Aren't you supposed to? It's called disclosure, you dickhead. You gotta just, <laughs> don't you have to present everything you got? No surprises. I was just getting ready to finesse him. You know, I was getting ready to finesse him. <laughs> and he offers to have the whole thing copied and sent to me. <laughs> now I ask you, would you give a shit what pair of pants the son of a bitch who served you was wearing? Honest. Now, how do you serve the like? It's not he's not like going to answer the door, right? Like, for a flower delivery, right? Well, that's basically that's basically it. So that that's basic in a nutshell, right? Exactly. You can't just walk up to the fucking thing and like knock on the door. Mm -hmm. Hello. Um, so he gave it to his lawyers. I don't think it's like, it's not like a that that essentially yeah, like and that. and that's kind of what's happening here. So the high court would be the ones to have to actually get this and do it. So this is what the high court said. Uh, spokesperson for the high court said today, quote, the lawyers acting for Mr. Free have now provided further information to the high court and the high court has accepted the request for service under the Hague service convention. The legal process has not yet been served, but the high court will now take the steps to serve under the convention unless service is arranged by agreement between the parties, meaning they're going to do it unless he finally agrees to, OK, just take just. Let's, let's get on with this right exactly exactly well, one way or another he's got to go through with it whether yeah, he, he does. volunteers or he gets served yeah because the first the, the first point of defense was 
we haven't been served that this isn't proper that's what his uh u.s lawyer andrew brettler was saying the other day well now that's going to be basically off the table right um so uh we'll see what happens from here on out but uh you know this is a you know and again this is why we started like talking about this particular angle of the story prince andrew because it's like wow wouldn't it be something if he really does get served because i would have put that at 20 percent, maybe maybe 10 percent chance it actually happens and here we are like nine days later and it's happened so that's kind of happen it's a, yeah yeah oh well interesting yeah. to see what happens next i mean the next thing is he's got to appear right he's gonna have to appear in some way shape or form now i think his lawyer can can do some of it uh, especially in the beginning you right. know but yeah i think at some point given the circumstances what we know already happened prior transcripts the fact that she's you know going to be you know heading for court come uh november right it feels like at some point probably in next year at some point we might see this guy you know on on u.s soil standing trial for this we'll see i why it takes so long to get this process. I mean, I get it. It's a lot to go through, but holy crap, does it every this whole thing crawl? I know, I know. It just takes forever. And what's scary about this is, you know, you look at Epstein and what happened with him and Ghislaine and all the concern there. I mean, you, I, I don't know. I feel really weird about Andrew. He doesn't seem like the kind of person that would even make it to a trial in in the United States. Like I just. Well, if he has to, he has to. I no, but but you know what I'm saying. Like he seems like a, a real cowardice piece of shit. Like I could totally oh, yeah. see him taking the Epstein way out. Uh, I can see know, that. Then, uh, then yeah. actually going through this whole entire process. He'll send as many representatives as he can until he, until he's completely ordered. You have to be here. Which who knows if that's going to happen. All right, one final thought on this, but first, uh, we got to tell you about our good pals over at Jumpstart Coffee Company. Boy, my lighting is not good for holding up plugs. I got you. Frank's got the dark roast blend. blend. I have the espresso blend. Which I cannot wait to try. Been savoring it. I can't smell it right now because I haven't opened it yet, but I want to. But I love the. This one's open, and I can smell it. That's amazing. That crackle of the packaging. I love that. You love the crackle of the packaging? I do. I love like that like that matte that matte finish of a of a package. I just I don't know. I love this. I just love their packaging. It's so classy and simple okay. uh, to me. Uh Jumpstart Coffee Company, best coffee that I have ever had. Drink them all. Starbucks, is, Dunkin' Donuts, uh Gregory's, you name it. I've been drinking them. Look at that. Beautiful. Look at that beautiful look freshness in there just freshness how good that does that smell amazing that is the dark roast it's a big body dark chocolate and smoke yeah i can't believe how much i love the medium roast because i'm a i'm a that's why i like it that's why i i drink starbucks because it's like give me the give me the burnt give me the bitterness i love it um i like that bitterness not as much in the in the in the medium roast blend but delicious because of those light little caramel notes that they got in there i hear uh, you Great coffee, great cause. Jumpstar Coffee gives 50% of their profits to the Navy SEAL Foundation, which is extraordinary. They operate under the five pillars of support for the Navy SEALs, strength, resilience, health, education, and community. So if you buy a bag of this, you're supporting our podcast, you're supporting Jumpstar Coffee Company, and you're supporting the Navy SEALs at times in their careers when they need you the most. By the way, we've been relying on them for our freedom, so nice little payback would be a nice thing to do buy yours right now using the link in the description below on this episode or click the banner over at anthonyonair.com and use the promo code AOA15 and save 15% off your Jumpstart Coffee Company 15% off I think we started with Jumpstart a week ago maybe week and a half so I feel like the first few people who have got who have ordered are starting to get theirs in I can't wait to to see your yeah. feedback give us the reviews Throw Honest reviews. Comments. Yeah, put them in the comments. We'll share them. We did the same thing uh, with, um, you know, Hero Soap Company. People left honest reviews. You know, if people don't like it, share it. I don't care. We'll put it in there. Everybody should know. Uh, but by the way, we we rigorously 
go through these things and we don't just pick anybody to be a sponsor on this show. It is a process. So um, uh, we wouldn't plug them if they don't deserve it. And uh, we stand by their coffee. One million percent. That's a lot of percent. That's a lot of percentage. That is a lot of percentage. We don't have to even go that high, but we do. I didn't even think we can go that high, but we are. And here we are. Yeah. It goes all the way up to 11. Uh Link in the description, anthonyonair.com, promo code AOA15. Final thought on this um, stupid Prince Andrew there, Frankie C, is have we ever seen, like, the uh, uh, a second in command, third, fourth, ninth, he's ninth, I think, to the throne. But have we ever seen a member of a royal family of a country stand trial in another country? Like, can you even remember that in history? in another country i don't know it seems very strange and very very bizarre yeah i feel like before i think when that kind of thing happened i don't think there were trials yeah i think like when they got someone else from the royal fam from another country's leaders it was pretty much you know you're just done if this guy stood trial don't you feel like it would be like oj trial times a trillion It'd be up there. Right? Up. Wouldn't it be just the center of attention for the entire time? I mean, it's a little early in the century to, to say trial of the century, but... Good point. But it's cl- it's it would be the, the, the one to beat. That's why I have you here. You keep me grounded, Frank. I try. You, gotta, <laughs> you know, I want you getting ahead of yourself. Pope, uh, who do we have now? Francis? Thomas? What's this guy's name? Francis. Okay. Uh, Pope Francis, he had to... Uh, question vaccine skeptics, including his very own Cardinals. Bam. Pope said Pope today. dropping the mic on the Cardinals. Well, I find this fascinating. He doesn't understand why people refuse to take the COVID-19 vaccine, saying, quote, humanity has a history of friendship with vaccines. And that, end quote. And that the serene discussion about the shots was a, necess- was a necessity to him. He said, quote, even the College of Cardinals, there are some negationists. Um, he noted that one of them, a poor guy, had been hospitalized with the virus. That uh, was an apparent reference to the U.S. Cardinal Raymond Burke, who was hospitalized in the U.S. and placed on a ventilator last month after contracting the virus. Francis was asked about the vaccine skeptics and those who oppose vaccine mandates by a Slovakian reporter, given that some of the events during his four-day pilgrimage to the country were restricted to people who have gotten the COVID-19 jabs. I hate when people say jabs. That sounds weird. That's well, different countries. That's not, that's Europe. That's European. They call it jabs. Yeah. We call them shots. They call them jabs. Oh, was that, is that right? Is that what they just call Is that how they refer to them? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah, anytime. That, that makes sense. Shots, jabs. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they'll still call it a vaccine, but the, the actual, it's a jab. So he said it's a bit strange because humanity has a history of friendship with vaccines. Um, Francis said nothing that uh, children for decades have been vaccinated against measles, mumps, and polio. And no one else said anything. Oh, he said noting. I'm sorry, not nothing. He said noting that children for decades have been vaccinated against measles, mumps, and uh, polio. Yeah. I don't... uh, I'm with him. Even the even the Pope has had to uh, quell some of the uh, doubters. Skeptics. Yeah, in, yeah, in the cardinal uh, in the ranks of the College of Cardinals. You know, the the representative of God here on Earth is saying, "Get the <laughs> why are we questioning the vaccine? Get the vaccine." And, you know, people are still like, "Well, I don't know." Let's see, the doctors, the scientists, everybody on you know. Everybody is God to this mix. Are you saying Pope, God, I'm saying God the Pope. wants it? I'm saying the Pope. I didn't say God. You said God's representative. I don't honor. speak for. I don't speak for. He is, but I don't speak for God. So you got the doctors, the scientists, the people who created. Doesn't God want the you vaccine? To speak for him? I'm sorry. Doesn't God want you to speak for him? I don't speak for. I don't put words in his mouth. I don't pretend to know what he'll say. Okay. When asked. Right. So That's the Pope, okay. all the leaders of the world, the, the doctors, the scientists, the people who created this vaccine, all say, get the get the vaccine. But some schmuck on Twitter goes, oh, I don't know. And everybody's like, oh, 
I believe the schmuck. The thing is, is though, how do we know that this is the real Pope and they didn't kill the Pope and now they have um, a lizard man? A, yes, a robot controlled drone Pope in there. This could be drone Pope. This could be drone Pope. Yeah. Uh, see, if it's drone Pope, then we got some problems. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I can't I can't imagine. Wait until we get to the Nicki Minaj thing, because the update that just happened prior to the podcast is. It's unbelievable to me. Unbelievable. Is it unbelievably stupid? Because that's where I'm seeing this going. Well, let's see. But if, for those of you who don't know, Nicki Minaj sent out a tweet the other day about somebody who she knows having a negative reaction uh, to the uh, to the jab. And uh, it has blown up so huge that what happened earlier was like, I, I, I was watching it and I was like, I cannot believe this is actually happening. I can't believe this is actually happening. Anyway, we'll get to it right after the 500 greatest songs of all time from Rolling Stone magazine. I love these lists because they're so fantastic all the time. Who makes these? Like, is it one person sitting in a cubicle who's writing the article going, you know what? I think this is the or they're getting this data from something. Uh, no, I think they leave it up to the new interns. I think that's their first oh, job. Right. Well, then that's fine. They're like, get in the corner, intern, and organize 500 songs. And the intern looks at them and goes, out of how many? Out of all of them. Out of every song of all yeah. time. When did the, when did we start with songs? When, when does all time begin? The first song was 1834. Okay. I have no idea. <laughs> Did I have you for a second? Sounds, there, no, you didn't. <laughs> People were singing songs for a very long time. Well, of but course. When, you know, how do we know when the first song was? Who, but who? You, I think you mean when the first recorded song. No, I don't. Okay, then then I got well, nothing. I mean, the first song people can, not to be recorded, it could just be remembered. People pass down songs to generations. Yeah. Uh, has been Why for... is it the best? The number one song should be Happy Birthday. If it's not then I don't know what this list is about. Well, I think that might be the most sung song. Is that how you... Sung song, sure. Sung song? Is that proper English? Yep. That um, could be. So what makes it the greatest song, most enjoyable? Well, Frankie C., let's go... Let's go through the... Let's go We're not going to go video. through all 500, right? Let's find out what exactly makes it. How we made the list Ooh. and who voted, according to Rolling Stone magazine. Nearly 4,000 songs received votes. Uh, where the 2004 version of the list was dominated by early rock and soul, the new edition contains more hip-hop, modern country, indie rock, Latin pop, reggae, and R&B. More than half the songs here, 254 in all, weren't present in the old list 17 years ago. If Old Town Road is on this stupid list, yeah, we gotta. Burn I'm gonna flip thing. the table that this iPad is sitting on. Mm -hmm. uh, the result is a more expansive, inclusive vision of pop music that keeps rewriting history with its every beat. Ooh, and this is uh, where it shows all the writers uh, of this. I guess these are all the people that contributed. Looks like it. There's a guy named Michelangelo in there, so that's oh, pretty thank cool. God. I love Michelangelo; he's the best. All right, so let's get on with this. In 2004, Rolling Stone published the 500 greatest songs of all time. It's one of the most widely read stories in our history, viewed hundreds of millions of times on the site, but a lot has changed. Back then, the iPod was relatively new, and Billie Eilish was three years old. So they Yikes. decided to give the list a reboot to create a new version. Uh, they convened a poll of more than 250 artists, musicians, and producers, from Angelique Kijo to Zed, Sam Smith to Megan Thee Stallion. M. Ward to Bill Ward. I like what they did there. Uh, as well as figures from the music industry and leading critics and journalists. You think WAP is on this? Oh, I hope so. That should I be no so. top five. What now? Now, you just heard them say that early rock is limited. And 254 of the songs on this list were not on the last one. What is your uh, prediction for, for number one? For number one. Keep in mind now. If this were the Firecracker 400, we'd know it would be the Stairway to Heaven. Stairway to Heaven. This is not the Firecracker 4000. No. What is it? I, I'm thinking it's got to be a Beatles song. Did we ever tell our Firecracker 400 story on the air? Do we have a Firecracker 400 story? 
Frank and I mutually worked for somebody in radio once on a station where they did the Firecracker 400. And it was my first job in radio. And I remember thinking like, they were like, oh, we got to do the, the, the countdown. And I was like, oh, this is exciting. I was like, I wonder. Um, and now this is, two th actually, this is 2004. This is right around the same time that Rolling Stone came out with this list. So I, I was, it was my first radio job. It was 2004. It was before, I mean, we had internet, but it was pre-Google, sure. right? Google's 2005, right? Um, so it was really internet one. And, um, I'm like, this is, I, I can't wait. I'm like, I, I'm like, are, are people going to come in? Like, are we going to have debates? Like, is it going to be? So I remember just being elated about it. And I said to the program director and I, cause I, cause now I wanted to make sure that I was included. Cause that was the other thing I was like, I, I'd like to be, you know, I was like, let me ask about it this way. I don't miss out on the big firecracker 400 they're going to build a list of the greatest songs of, of all time you naive bastard so i said um how does it work how do you guys put the list together i was like can i be a part of it and he looked at me like i had seven heads and he goes i found the list from a station in albany we're just going to swap out songs two and three and that's it leave me alone <laughs> that's really that is about i might have added leave me alone but that was what he was thinking and that is exactly what happened? They found a list from a station in Albany and they just fucking copied the whole entire thing and they swapped songs two and three. <laughs> that was it. Uh, that was it. And you know uh, damn well who that radio. was. Of course I do. Uh, it's, just, it's the magic of radio. What? See now, the real credit. I mean, I wonder who that person. I wonder who that person in uh, in Albany was who put that list together. They probably got it from a tremendous uh, list. And I guarantee you. I'm sorry to cut you off, Frank. Yep. To your point, if you went to Albany and you were like, where did you fuckers get this list? They had a been station like, oh, in California. Found a station in California. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, because, yeah. Because like a lot of because it kind of like how TikTok is now. You see one person do a trend and then like 4000 people do a trend. Radio invented that. Yeah, no, that's true. Except you can't go down and click the little song on the, the little sound thing on the bottom to find out who the original person was, because that's not part of it in radio. No, no, no. Yeah. It's all smoke yeah. and mirrors so now all right so number 500 is kanye west stronger i like this song it's a good song the little bit right. stronger. that's a good song here's kinda, my problem they kind of stole the the hook from what ford or the six million dollar man who made him faster stronger oh yeah that's right yeah good point yeah good point but whatever I like those shades, though. Those like if you went to a wedding or a Sweet 16 in the 80s, you got yeah. those shades by a disc jockey. You definitely did. <laughs> they did nothing to block the light from your eyes. By yeah. The way. For those that are listening, there's those plastic shades with plastic lines like it look like look like look, uh, like a window shade. Yeah, like a window shade. What, no, what do you call those things? The vine? I, mean, I don't know. What? Like the grill on the front of a truck. I guess so. Yeah, there you go. That's a better thing. Last episode, we couldn't get uh, Trivet, 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 and like, Trivet. <laughs> and like fucking 10 minutes before this show started, somebody commented, finally, yeah. what that was. Pack all right, idiots. so keep going. We're not going to go through all 500 of these, are we? Mm -hmm. Let's see. Uh, no, we're not. We'll skip around. But I will say I have a problem already. Okay. I think if you're going to curate the 500 greatest songs of all time, we have a moral obligation to know what. 501 was like what was the one that just fucking some honorable missed? mentions yeah right. yeah yeah huh i want to know that it's a good question baby love ah oh, say that's a nice one yeah which is so weird because and i say this with love baby love is such a much better song than kanye west stronger like i'm sorry but Holland yeah. Dozier Holland are one of the greatest songwriting teams ever. This is such a classic fucking song. I'm a sucker for Motown, though. So that's true. Let's um, see. Towns Van Zant, Lizzo, Truth Hurts at 497. Harry Nilsson, Without You, Carly Simons, You're So Oh, vain. that should be way higher at 495. And so should Time After Time. Cindy Lauper's Time After Time. All right, Frank, where do you want to skip around to? As you see, you see here on top, these are what we got. I right, hit 450. What's number 450? All right, let's see. Let's see 450 here as we go through the Rolling Stone. 
Top, top 500, 500 songs of all time. As voted on by you. Oh, uh, you see, Don't Fear the Reaper is number 449. Again, should be way higher. Yeah. That's a classic. You know what's great about this, too, is when, when like, Blue Oyster Cold goes on tour, they go, like, oh, you know, we were named top 500 Rolling Stone songs of all time. You can't be like, we have the 449th greatest song of all time. That's not good. You but can't really do that. They, this song should be top 100 at least. At the very least. Really? Don't Fear the Reaper? Absolutely. Mm, I don't well, know about <laughs> Yeah, maybe cowbell. for that reason. I don't know. Well, it came back. All right, let's see here. Erica Badu. Help. The Come Beatles. On. Help. Oh, did we guess? We didn't guess what number one would be. Um, I think it's a Beatles song, but this this threw me yeah. off. If it's if Help is this this high on the list or this low on the list. Well, I bet you they have like a million songs. That's true. You should be able to curate by artist. Yeah. Um, number one is going to be... Uh, not Let It Be, but one of those Beatles songs. Um, what's the one? No, it's not going to be uh, uh, Come Together. Come Together? You don't think Come Together? Not number one. I think that it is not going to be a rock song at all. I think if you start the list with that whole inclusion, there's more hip hop songs thing. Okay. It's going to it's going to be a hip hop song. I'm saying Gangnam Style. Oh my god! Can you imagine? <laughs> Where is that on this list? Hey, it's the first song to reach a billion views on YouTube. That's not true. That is definitely true. It's the first song. The first song was it? The first one that hit a billion views? Yeah. Because I know a bunch of hit hit now. Well, now, yeah, but that was the first. Whatever happened to Gunnam Style? I still listen to it. Like every Almost day? A, every day. I'm listening to it after the show. <laughs> All right, go to go to number 400. All right, I feel like we should get down to the bottom, though, of this. Like, we, let's go to 401. Let's show all of them. Okay. Let's see here. Uh, What's uh, oh, lovely? Oh, you see, lovely day. That should be higher. But Bill Withers, lovely day should be fucking higher. Uh, when you get down, Kiss should not be on this list at all. When you get down idiot. to it, this is a fucking hard thing to do. It is, but sucker MCs by Run. Ooh, free bird oh free my bird god is 407? 407 that is crazy fleetwood mac go your own way at 400 uh, how is go your own way better than free bird yeah i agree free bird's better than go your own way that's crazy station to station bowie at 400 sylvester you make me feel mighty Re oh i know that song you we feel that's yeah that's a good one yeah Duran, hungry Duran, like the wolf hungry like the wolf yeah, yeah you can place that anywhere it doesn't matter public enemy bring the noise okay elvis costello allison at 396 i'm gonna uh, take their word on that Africa one Bambana. jeff buckley grace mm, that's a tough yeah. one that's a good song james brown say it loud i'm black and i'm proud at 393 cold play fix you wow that song makes me cry. I've admitted to that already. Ugh. Remember when the Islanders were closing at the Coliseum? They played that song when they came Ugh. out. I shed a tear. I almost threw up. <laughs> All right, Eric Church. Okay. Judge me if you want. I didn't even know that Eric Church had a fucking song named Springsteen. Hold on. Oh, come on. Come on. What? You see that? Go back. Right ah, there. Metallica enters Sandman at 390. Again, no surprise here, but I think that should be higher. Yeah, no, no, that's that's not a, not a surprise at all. This is ridiculous. But uh, come on, be honest though. Shouldn't Enter Sandman be at least, or Master Puppets? I would say should be at least top two hundred. No, uh, two hundred. Yeah, I'll give you that. I could see Enter Sandman being one seventy or one fifty. I don't even think Enter Sandman. Well, what's the the best Metallica song according to Elton? Most Johnson, iconic. Nothing else matters. Nothing else matters is great, but most iconic and. Legendary would probably be Master Puppets. 
I, I mean, so. most worldwide known would probably be Enter Sandman. That's the most popular. Yeah, you think although, so? Although no, nowadays, nothing else matters actually reached a billion views. It's the first Metallica song to do that. Yeah, I think that's their tune, dude. I think people like that. Like the, that's it's a the slow. It's a slow. Well, because a lot of people recently have covered it, and um, you know, it's a, it's it's popular now. But back when it came out, Enter Sandman was was huge. Anyway, I don't know. Let's see what else we got here. All right, Brass and Pocket, one of the great songs of all time, though. I mean, come on. Eh. DMX up in here at three eighty eight. Uh, New York Dolls, Personality Crisis, 387. I'd like to meet the people who voted for that one so I could punch them in the face. Uh, How is Lola better than Enter Sandman? I think Lola sucks, to be honest with you. Oh, God. I mean, mean, okay, this is going to be maybe a little controversial, but the, uh, I think, what's his name uh, from the Kinks? Um, Ray Davies? No. Dave Davies. No. Then you lost me. All right. Anyway. The other guy? The other guy. A little overrated. Okay. Yeah, uh, the other guy. Diana Ross, I'm coming out. Cardi B in at 384. Yeah. See, I don't think Cardi B deserves to be over Diana Ross. You think that song is better than Into Sandman? Like we... Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you can stop asking those questions. No, the that's going to be yes. my question through the whole thing. But here's what I'm saying. When you're curating this list and you see, okay, Cardi B is just under Diana Ross, like somebody in the room is going to be like, let's just flip flop those because it feels better. I guess. I mean, do you think they have them all on one big chalkboard? I wonder. I wonder. Fiona Apple doesn't deserve to be on this list at all. I'm sorry. I like Fiona Apple just fine. But uh, Fountains of Wayne radiation vibe. That's surprising. That is not a big hit. I know that song. It's not a big hit. Vomit all over myself. Yeah, that's I wouldn't say one of the greatest. That's fucking crazy, actually, now I think about it. It's a good, it's an okay song, Fountains of Wayne. I love Fountains of Wayne. They're great. Uh, but, I mean, come on. That's not. Okay. That's a rough one. Uh, the Killer's Mr. Brightside, 378. Oh, sure. Great That song. should be higher. That should be higher. Especially, here's the thing, too, which I feel like these assholes aren't taking into account, is karaoke appeal. I don't think they're taking that into account, no. Right? Like, Mr. Brightside is like, I feel like you can't go out for a karaoke night and somebody doesn't break out Mr. Brightside at the bar. That's uh, last time I was at a karaoke thing. Jeez. Yeah, it's been a long time, right? It has been. I want uh, to see where, Brandy's, uh, where Brandy is on this one, Looking Glass. Speaking, uh, of, uh, speaking of my karaoke songs. That is a great fucking song. Yeah, it is. That is the a great Drifters song. Up on the Roof. Uh, okay. Um, do you know that uh, when I was on LNG, which is one of the stations out here on Long Island, some woman r- just writes me one day and she's talking about Brandy Looking Glass. She's like writing a paper on it or whatever. And she was interviewing the guy from, from Looking Glass. And we started talking about it on the air. Brian, Brian, who was on the show, uh, on the podcast a while ago, um, Brian the Cannon Bannon. We started talking about it and it caught such fire us our discussion of what it means like who brandy it's such is such a great you know what it, why because it's a story it tells a good story it's, it's about this woman it's such a great creative and just you you you, you disappear into the song you know yes oh it's so good it's a great it's a great story like when you i will not read le- i won't be the one of those guys like go listen to the lyrics man no just you don't have to you listen to it it's very clear what they're saying yeah but when you read the lyrics like it's so it's such a wonderful story yeah and it's up for such interpretation of like what it really means um and the guy never says it i forget the guy's name it'll come to me anyway but he kind of sent word through this girl who was writing this article to us on like what it really means and it was was uh, there a real person named brandy i don't i think so Cool. There's a port on the Western Bay, and it serves a hundred ships a day. Lonely sailors pass the time away they talk about their homes. And there's a girl in this harbor town, and she works laying whiskey down. They say brandy, fetch another round. She serves them whiskey and wine. The sailors say brandy, you're a fine girl. What a good, what a good wife you would be. But my, but your life, wait, my life, my love, and my lady is the same. Yeah. Brandy. 
Brandy wears, wears a braided, braided chain, chain made of finest, made of finest silver, silver from, from the north, north of Spain. Of Spain. A, a locket, locket that bears, the, bears the name of the man, man that, that Brandy, Brandy loved. loved. So there's a man. He came to something. something. Yeah. Yeah. Brandy used to watch his eyes when he told his sailor stories. She could feel the ocean fall and rise. She saw its rage and glory, but he had always told the truth. Lord, he was an honest man, and Brandy does her best to understand. At night when the bars close down, Brandy walks through a silent town and loves a man who's not around. She can still hear him say, Brandy, you're a fine girl. Oh, man. It's a good they don't song. write lyrics like that anymore. Yeah. God. They really don't. Just that story of, like, I, I love you, but I'm, I, got this, I got this thing I got to do. She loves a man that's not around. And she can have anybody she wants, but she passes on it just for the guy that she can't have. Yeah, but the guy singing doesn't want her because my his life is love and his lady's the sea. But that's what he, yeah, he that's exactly, that's what I'm saying. Like she walks through the town lonely. She doesn't take yeah. up any of the other offers because her heart belongs to this guy, and he's off doing you know. And her, that guy, yeah, yeah. Why is that so appealing and 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 romantic? I don't even know. They should make a movie called Brandy. They should. They, they should turn this song into a movie. You know, that would be a great TV series where like every episode you is just a song. You just do you do a full on episode storytelling oh, of a song. That's good. Like not telling the story, but like actors, they're really doing it and yeah. they, they play out the scene. Like Piano Man. Yeah. You know, a guy playing you know. I think the greatest song story ever is Long Black Veil. Have you ever heard this song? by it's an old lefty something or other it's an old country song um but i love the premise well they tried making uh, a, a movie out of a song called the uh, christmas shoes and that one that one just makes you want to kill yourself yeah it's fucking depressing but uh yeah they should make that's, that's good they should make a a series of episodes of tv shows based on songs, classic songs. Let me read you this one. I'm going to read you Long Black Veil. Lefty Frizzell is an old, an old country song. song We're never sucks. getting to number one, but go ahead. We'll get there. Um, what time is it? What are, we, what are we, 37 minutes in? Oh, we're doing all right. Um, 10 years ago, on a cold, dark night, someone was killed underneath the town hall light. This is, is an Mr. old Burns? country song. It sounds right, like who shot Mr. Burns to me. Wait, listen. There were few at the scene, but they all agreed that the Slayer who ran looked a lot like me. Did he look the, like Maggie Simpson? The judge said, son, what is your alibi? If you were somewhere else, then you won't have to die. I spoke not a word, though it meant my life, for I had been in the arms of my best friend's wife. I'm How sorry. How fucked up is that? Uh, that? Yeah, it's fucked up, but I feel like have your best friend and be mad at you or die. I don't know. That's, kind of, you know, you could kind of, after a little while, you can make up with your best friend, maybe, or you, at least you're alive. Yeah. But picture like, this is like 1800s, 1700s or 1600s, even whatever. Then this is like kind of taking place. Like if you, if, if you're, if the wife was cheating, like she's dead, like she's dead too. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like if you come out and go, I was banging my best friend's wife. She's dead too. They're not letting her live. That doesn't doesn't necessarily mean that. Depends where this happened and when this happened. I don't know. I love that. I love that that kind right. of idea. I mean, I like the stories, like uh, Walk the Line and you know, uh, Folsom Prison Blues. That's the stories. That oh, you know. great! Yeah, fucking great. Good stuff. How has nobody done this? This is like with Netflix and Hulu and all these streaming services dying for content. This is a great. You know what it is? Probably you'd have to get. The rights to all these songs and it's a million dollars you know it's ridiculous yeah. yeah but why wouldn't someone want that i would yeah. i think it would be amazing yeah i think it would be amazing and and then because you don't like if if you don't i think it's even better if you don't say what it is oh you just well what you like, leave it to interpretation like the name of the episode should be episode one episode it's not two. right it shouldn't be telling of what it should be know. the name of the song it shouldn't be the name of the song because you should be watching it and then see if you can figure out, oh, this is, you know, what not like people wouldn't figure it out in the first five minutes, but still it would be kind of fun to be like, tune in to see what, what the song is going to be this week. I feel like that would be a no brainer hit. 
Yeah, let's 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 make those. those All right, where do you want to skip ahead to? Two hundred. Two hundred sounds good. Okay, let's go over to two hundred here. And uh, oh, it's a daily double. That's exciting. Uh, changes. Bowie changes. Great fucking song. Yeah. Great song. Dream Ooh. on. I'm in. Ooh. Sexual healing. Marvin Gaye. Nice. It's like fucking murderers row so far. I can't. I can't stand the rain. Okay, I like Missy Elliott's version better. I'm just saying. I mean, is it better than Dream On and and Changes? I don't know. I don't, mm, I don't think that's, so. That's tough. All right, that's a great song. Get Up, Sex Machine is a great song. Probably Get Up. Top, top Get 50, over. though? I'd put that in the top 50. Would you? Yeah, I think so. I love James Brown. Crazy by Patsy Cline. Uh, a little overrated. Uh, PJ Harvey, ride me. I don't get PJ Harvey rid of me at all. Oh, what did I, what'd I say? You oh, said rid ride me. me. There you go. <laughs> wild horses, and eh, not their best. I, I'm sure yeah, they're gonna have more. I don't love wild horses from the Stones. Ghetto boys, mind playing tricks on me at 192. Okay, old Bobby Billy Joe. Country, old that's Billy. a classic. Yeah, and that's a story too. That's a real story. Uh, NWA. Ah. Fuck the police. Space Bowie Oddity, again. that's a little low or high. Low. Oh, Jimi Hendrix, Little Wing. I fucking love Little Wing. Mm. Might I be feel a little low. 188 is a little low. I, I I feel like Little Wing is not even... like People who love Jimi Hendrix wouldn't even put that in his like, top three, and that hurts my feelings. Yeah. Little Wing's oh. great. Subterranean Homesick Blues, Dylan. That's a fucking great song. Dylan, you son of a... Bitch. I feel like this should be in the top ten. I don't know about that. And it's one eighty-seven. Yeah. Come on, this is like folk rock rap. Look here, it says in the caption, the first rap record. First rap, according to Tony Glover. Man, Tony, a Glover buddy knows of what Dylan, he's talking about. <laughs> okay, let's see. What's better than that? Then we've got one hundred and eighty-six better. Uh, staple singles, I'll take you there. I'll take you there. Here's Michael the thing Jackson's with, Beat It? That's low. Here's the thing with Subterranean Homesick Blues. This was written in what? 50, 65? Yeah. You fucking listen to those lyrics? Applies to today. Same shit going on still applies today. What? Yeah. Beat It. Uh, beat It at 185. That's low, man. Nothing. I think Beat It's better than nothing compares to you. I would agree with that. Oh, you are such of my Stevie life. Wonder. That's a great song. He's got to have a bunch song. more on there. Stevie Wonder has to have a song in the top 10 or else this is bullshit. This is a bullshit list. Another song that's low. Sound of Silence. When that's you say it. low, it, mean it's... it means it should be higher on the list, like in the top 50. Okay. okay. Simon and Garfunkel, Sound of Silence at 182. Right. That's the, the Birds, one. Eight Mile High. People love The Birds. I And they love this Eight Miles High. I, this ain't even The Birds' best song. I don't no, fucking get not. it. Yeah, I don't, I don't get know. it. This one's out of nowhere. Lou, Lou Reed. Reed. That's the one that's a little overrated. He was Ooh, in the Kinks. Comfortably Numb is 179. <sighs> Holy shit. You mean there are 178 songs better than Comfortably Numb? I don't know. That's, that's hard to do. That is rough. Billie Eilish is bad guy. <laughs> is better than Comfortably Numb? That's not even close. <laughs> what, what planet are we on? That's not even close. That's a great... What? Bad guy's a guy that's got that great little beat sure. to it. But... And she's got, yeah, she's got, mm, 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 yeah, mm, yeah, fine. But comfortably numb is comfortably numb. Again, if you're in that room, you got to go, you know what? We just got to flip these yeah, two. Just, just to... or people are going to, people are going to throw rocks through our window. Van Halen's jump. Great song should be hot. When I say higher on the list, I mean, a lo uh, you know, better. Hot, like, <laughs> I can't say lower. Lower means like the, towards 500. When I say higher, I mean more towards number one. Yeah, Janine's uh, fired up about something. Can you I'll see? I'll say better, better on can the you, list. Can you see J. Sam's name in the thing, Frank, or no? No, I can't. Oh, okay. All right, I'll screenshot it and send it over there. to you. So Van yeah. Halen's jump is very good. Let's add J. Sam's into the list. All right, let's go. Let's go to one hundred. What do you say? Do it. J. Wait, Sam's give me one fifty. Give me one fifty. Okay, we're going over Janine the top five hundred songs of Rolling Stone magazine. We're going to speed through the rest of these. Uh, rather quickly, because I know, because I think Elton John's in the top three, and I know oh, how God. much you love him. God. Okay, one fifty basket case. That's that's good. That's good. Rocket yeah. Man. <laughs> oh my God. We haven't talked about Elton John once until you got here. 
How is Rock yeah, sure. Man only 149? Mm. Yeah, how is it only 149? And Cashmere. Cashmere should be better on the list. Blueberry Hill. Blueberry Hill is great. Fire, Fire and Rain, Rain 146 from uh, James Taylor. Outcast Miss Jackson, 145. Yeah. I think that's appropriately placed. Uh, that's a great fucking song. It is a good song. I'll give you that. That's fine. Jumping Stones, Jack Flash. Jumping Jack Flash. Clash, London Calling at 143. All right, I'm going to skip down. Yeah, skip it away. Skip away. I broke it. Oh. All right. Uh, Jay Sabs, what do you think is going to be number one? And this, this list does not just mean rock. It's everything. It's rap. It's R&B. It's yeah. country. It's rock and roll, rock stuff. You know, so it's a lot. It's all genres. So what do you think is going to be number one? Um, what? Maybe something from Pink Floyd or uh, Beatles. I right. don't know. So I'd say Beatles. Too, yeah, we yeah. said Beatles. I'm still trying to think of it, but I think it's going to be a hip hop song. I just don't know which one it is. I'm going for Let It Be. What about Billie Jean? Billie Jean's great, but I don't. I mean, if they put uh, beat it was like number four hundred, whatever the hell it was. Then I don't think beat it's gonna beat it's gonna be in the top fifty. Sure, there you oh, go. Wow. Beatles in my life. Look at that number ninety eight. Great fucking song. That is probably that's one of their best. The Beatles. That's a good one. Patty Smith, Gloria, overrated. That should not be. No, I love oh. Gloria. That's a good song. Okay, see, ninety nine problems is ninety six. That should have been ninety nine. Ninety nine. That's you gotta no keep brainer. the gimmick going. Yeah. I mean, if you're four spaces away, just move it. That's poor, poor planning. Oasis Wonderwall at 95. That feels high to me. Yeah, that's that's not. Is it better than Michael Jackson's Beat It? No. Better than Since Kelly Clarkson. Gone from Kelly Clarkson, the 93rd greatest uh, song of all time. My God. Again, great song, but 93rd greatest song of all time. That's Who compiled right. this list? Aretha Franklin. That's that's should be better on the list. Yeah. All right. Here we go. Fifty to fifty to number one. We'll go through here these we go. quickly. Oh, here we go. Daddy Yankee, featuring oh. Glory, Gasolina. Oh, I've that is really. That it, you never heard of that song before. Have oh, you I've heard, heard this it. one? Have I heard it? Yeah. I, Absolutely. Well, you, you probably have heard it. Dame my Gasolina. Oh. Okay. How was that number fifty? That beat out Pink Floyd. Um. Comfortably numb. Yeah. Okay. Here's the thing, too. I don't know if any song in the last 11 years should really be on this list. Honestly, that, I'll you, give you that. Shit's got a season. You know what I'm saying? Shit's got a simmer. All right. Lauren Hill, do up that thing. I no, feel like that should 49. be higher. That's a good fucking song. I don't think it should be 40. I think it should be in 200 something. You're crazy. Okay. Oh, I like I like to sing that one. Radiohead, idiot, tech. This is just stupid. This is not even the great. This is nowhere near. The, oh my god! This is just trying to be score points with the fucking uh, uh, music snobs. Elton John, Tiny Dancer at forty-seven. Paper Planes is better than Elton John's Tiny Dancer. I will yes. say this: Paper Planes is a it's fucking a great song. Absolutely, I can listen to it anytime. By the way, that I feel is the song that made people start calling songs bangers because that's a fucking banger. Is it that big banger? All right. Kendrick Lamar, all right at forty-five. Michael There's Jackson, Billie Jean. Billie Jean at forty-four. There goes my theory. Temptations, my girl at forty-three. Again, okay. I would have put that in the top ten. Flip. I mean, I think Billie Jean's better, but they're right on track there. Uh, Bob Marley, the Whalers, Redemption song at forty-two. Wow. Joy Division, Love Will Tear Us Apart, forty-one. Man. Jimi Hendrix, All Along the Watchtower at 40. Outcast, B.O.B., 39. Outcast has a lot of songs on this list. Is it me? I feel like we've seen more Outcast songs than Beatles songs on this list. Yep. Otis Redding, Sitting on the Dock of the Bay, 38. Prince, When Doves Cry, 37. Okay. The White Stripes, Seven Nation Army at 36. Wow. Bold move. I like it. Tutti Frutti. Tutti Frutti from... Uh, uh, Little Richard at 35. James oh. Brown, Papa's Got a Brand New Bag, 34. Sure. Johnny Be Good. Great 33. song. 33. Uh, <laughs> Biggie. Juicy. I probably would have put this in the top 10, too. Yeah, I would have put Hypnotize. Satisfaction probably was top five at some point when they were making lists 10, 15 years ago. 
You yeah. could tell this is one of those that have slid out of the top five. With yeah, just... because they got to put in. Yeah. Uh, Royals, <clears throat> Lord. Mm. Mm. Snoop Dogg. Nothing uh, but a cheat, baby. Thing. Talking Heads, Once in a Lifetime, 28. Springsteen's Born to Run, 27. I would have put that higher. Joni Mitchell, A Case of You, 26. Kanye oh, featuring Pusha T, Runaway at 25. What? Beatles, A Day in the Life at 24. That's a great song. Bowie Heroes, 23. Ronettes, Be My Baby, 22. Great fucking song. Yeah. Strange Fruit, that's a, that's, a, that's a moving tune. 21. Uh, Robin, Dancing on My Own. The hell is that? Nope. No, this does not belong. What is cold. that? I don't know. John Lennon's Imagine at 19. Uh, wow. Purple right. Rain What's at better than that? Let's see. 18. Bohemian Rhapsody at 17. Wow. This list were made in uh, There the was UK a time one. that was number one. Yep. Uh, Beyonce, Jay-Z, Crazy in Love. No. Okay. Beatles, I Want to Hold Your Hand at 15. Kinks, Waterloo Sunset. Disagree. No. I don't know that song. Stones, Give Me Shelter at 13. Stevie Wonder, Superstition yes. at 12. I would put that a little higher. Beach Boys, God Only Knows. God Only Knows. Great song. 11. Great song. Outcast. Outcast. Holy hey, crap. Yeah. Outcast 10. is dominating this list for some reason. They're killing it. <laughs> Good for them. Fleetwood Mac dreams. Okay, I gotta call bullshit on this. This is only. I'd rather listen the, to Tusk. This is only because of the cranberry juice guy. That's bullshit. All right. That's a that's a bump. Get your freak yes. on by Missy Elliott, number eight. <laughs> tell Janine, tell your brother-in-law that, that this song is on the list. And why? why? He favorite? hates that song. Oh. Does he? Beatles, what, Strawberry number? Fields at seven. Wow. Marvin Gaye, What's Going On at six. Great. Nirvana smells like wow. Teen Spirit at yeah, five. Sure, sure. Dylan's like a Rolling Stone at four. That's a little high. Sam Cooke, a change is going to come at three. Wow. Public Enemy, fight, fight the, the power. power. Number, at number two. two. Wow. Any final thoughts before the big reveal? It's got to be a Beatles tune. Yeah. Uh, what are you? What are you saying? Yeah. <sighs> I want to say it's a Michael Jackson song. I'm going to say Let It Be. You think Thriller? Maybe Thriller. I'm going to say Let It Be. Aretha Franklin's wow. respect at number wow. one. Did Holy not see cow. that coming. You haven't seen an Aretha song, I don't think, on the list. Well, we no. skipped around a lot, but no. respect. Respect that, that's for sure. Yeah, is that you think that's because the movie just uh, the movie just came out on HBO? Maybe I don't know. We'll see. But it's a great song. Good song. Uh, that's your 500 greatest songs of all time, according to Rolling Stone magazine comments. Uh, let us know what you think or what song you would have put there in the number one spot. Uh, Nicki Minaj and the testicle comment. <laughs> so the original tweet was her friend or her cousin's friend. Got the vaccine. It's a reliable source. Do Go I have ahead. this right, Janine? Her cousin's friend. Her cousin's friend got the vaccine. His testicles blew up. And he was going to get married. And then the woman left him. Was the tweet that she sent out. Uh, where and where to begin? With exploded that? all over the internet. It absolutely exploded. And so much so that just before we got on the air, and this is fantastic. Oh, we got to talk about Megan Fox. Uh, this is fantastic. The, hold on here. I want to make sure I got this right. The health minister of Trinidad and Tobago, apparently where this guy was, had to respond to this in hey. a press conference. No way. So the health minister of Trinidad and Tobago was talking about Nicki Minaj's co cousin's, cousin's friend's, friends testicles. Balls. What did he say? That was fucking so great. How embarrassing to make I, that. <laughs> I think that's so fucking great. What did he talk say about, about this guy's balls? nuts. <laughs> These I mean, nuts are big. Here's what he said, Frank. Here's the, here's One the... of the reasons we could not respond yesterday in real time to Miss Minaj is that we had to check and make sure that what she was claiming was either true or false. We did, and unfortunately, we wasted so much time yesterday running down this false claim. 
Well, you... <laughs> it is, as far as we know, at this point in time, there has been no such reported either side effect or adverse event. And what was sad about this is that it wasted our time yesterday. You had so much to do. To oh, no, they're not working on a pandemic or anything. Seriously. I want to know. They take all the claims seriously. I want to know what that process looked like. Uh, hi, uh, Tim. Yeah. Uh, are you the guy with the huge testicles? We're just calling to see. We've narrowed it down to 30 people. How's your nuts? We just want to know if your testicles are open. How's your nuts today? <laughs> uh, I'm sure they had to run tests on the guy and whatever and get medical yeah. you know blood work and all that stuff from the guy and and because that's such, an, if, that's such yeah. an odd claim like like why why would they why would they even make a press conference about it saying that they wasted time like no one no one told you to do that like no one told you because to it got that. such because it's spreading false information and it got because such... she's got 22 million and it exactly. exploded everywhere everybody was talking about this you guy have to address it if someone's you know spreading a story and millions of people are buying into it you got to address it i but mean i can't tell from her twitter i i obviously it, it's all reaction to this but i i can't tell um is she like standing by it is she what is she saying i think she's standing by it well if this is what she was told from someone like hey this could have happened whether he got it from the vaccine or not like and hey like people say it's a coincidence that these things happen at the same time like it's not really her fault if she was told this you know it's what her I mean? fault for telling everybody in the world this if if i if i told you a friend of my cousin his leg fell off when he got the vaccine. Would you go tell everybody you know that that's what happened? No. Well, I... Wait, say that again? If I told you that a friend of my cousin, his leg fell off a week after he got the vaccine, are you going to go tell every... Oh, look, my friend's cousin's friend got uh, you know the vaccine and his leg fell off, and then it's a big thing? I mean... Are you... You gotta at least if you're gonna tell millions of people something, make sure well, it's true. I think it was in response to why she didn't go to the Met Gala the other night, and she's because she's not vaccinated. And I don't know if someone asked her why she wasn't, so she responded on Twitter. That's why she's not, not because oh, of that. Oh, is this why it's, this happened? It's because she said she's done her research and she, there's not, nothing out there yet that's making her get it, which. I mean, you know, she's saying she heard this, so she yes, it's it's swaying her away from getting it. So I mean, like, I don't really, she doesn't have to give any reason why she's not getting it, but if this is something that she heard happened, whether it's from from it or not, this is this is what she doesn't like about it. But she doesn't have to answer to you or me. So I mean, well, hold on, we do have a podcast, so <laughs> it's not. Yeah, See, it's true. The difference is her research. She's not a scientist. She's Googling stuff. Yeah, but she yeah, heard but it from I... a cousin's friend, buddy. Oh, okay. Well, so, cousin's friend. Well, that's where that's it stops good for research. me. Like, if my cousins, well, first of all, all my cousins are pieces of shit. So it's, I, I got to take myself out of this a little bit. But if your cousin told you something, I get it. But if your cousin told you something that their friend told you, how fucking. Yeah, I don't know. How how reliable, and then that's what you're basing your medical. I mean, no, she's don't... not basing it off of that. Um, well, uh, transversely, here's the other side of it, Frank. Here she is. I know she's got 22 million followers, but here she is just having a Twitter conversation with somebody online, and all of a sudden, people put her up on a pedestal like she's the queen of the anti. This isn't all, right, but this isn't all of a sudden. I mean, they're gonna follow whatever she's. You know, they're gonna not follow, but like they're gonna read and. Uh, focus on whatever she says. You know, well, whatever she says anything. You know, she's famous. That's the price you pay. Yeah, but that, it's not. Yeah. It's not really her fault. I mean, honestly, I think the internet exploded because she wrote testicle. I think that's why. That's possible. That's it. 
Well, because it's it's a crazy, ludicrous story. Like, oh, his testicles. Right. I'm not saying that his testicles didn't blow up, but I'm saying if even if it happened or didn't happen, it's a fucking funny ass story. It it's, is funny. That's what the whole thing is. She said testicle, and it it blew up. She yeah. said because much she worse said than that in her song, right? See, now because she said testicle. I find this to be funny because I feel, but I and I think this is fairly obvious. But when I first read it, I go. This guy caught something from fucking somebody else behind his fiance's back. Oh, that's God. why. Th that's what I'm thinking. I mean, it, yeah, did anybody, what, what happens? What does it mean? What if they're swollen? Is that what happened? Yeah, just, she said they blew up. They blew up. Maybe right? the elephantitis of the nutsack. Yeah. I mean, what does that mean? Does it mean that they they got a little bigger? Does it mean that they that he can't walk? I mean, what is it? What are we talking about? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't really know, but I could totally see a guy because men are pieces of shit going. No, baby, I didn't fuck somebody else. This is Must from have the, been vaccine. the vaccine. <laughs> see how everybody blames everything on the vaccine, right? Exactly. <laughs> That's another excuse. Say another excuse. Can't hang out with you. You don't have the vaccine. Can't hang out with you. Like uh, <laughs> my nuts exploded from the vaccine. I saw uh, you with Diane. Are you fucking Diane? No, baby. I swear it's the vaccine. It's the vaccine. <laughs> the vaccine yeah. made me do crazy things it took over my mind yeah the next no. thing i fuck up in my house i'm gonna be like i'm sorry sweetheart it's the vaccine that's why i haven't been able to take out the garbage since i got it let's act and act like there's not oh, no side God. effects mm. right exactly you know? it makes me it, the vaccine makes me a little you know lethargic and lazy and yeah sometimes i just don't you know it, it makes me tune out a lot of stuff by the way, if you want proof that the vaccine isn't deadly, just look at Frank because he was lethargic and lazy before he got it. So right. if it was going to slow anybody down more, he would have been dead. Like you can't possibly like the next level, the next tick over from Frank's lethargic and lazy is dead. Yeah, but I counteract it with a little jumpstart uh, coffee company. Wow. There's my man right there. That's See how I counteract the facts. Save fifteen percent off with the promo code AOA fifteen when you use the link in the description below or the banner on the homepage of Anthonyonair.com. I went to a karate stance. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> well Seinfeld action. All right. So I just I kinda love that. We're at a point where literally internet rumor based off of a pop star's cousin's friend now has to be addressed. In a press conference in a major Prime country's Minister. health minister. Wow. And, Prime, and, and, Prime Minister. Prime Minister. Because they don't have presidents no, the health there. minister. No, not, think... not the leader of the country. The yeah, it wasn't the leader of the country. It was oh, the... okay. I was going to say that's yeah. even worse. No, it was the health minister. Yeah. That's well, I mean, I feel like at this point we're a day away from Biden having to say something. About, about Nicki Minaj's cousin's friend's testicles. Yeah. And I think Biden would be like this. I felt that man's testicles. I feel every man's testicles. They're fine. They were okay. They were normal this, size. This is a bold faced lie. Let's take a picture. I'd like to get in there and stand behind your testicles and massage them and see how big they really are. I think that's what Joe right. said. That's what you got to do. That's the only way to truly check. Give him the old Joe snifferoo behind the. The sniff oh, test. That, that, that works. Fucker. Mm. Okay. Uh, Megan Fox. I'm so glad you're here, Jay Sabs. I know you. I don't know if you want. Do you want to talk about the thing that you're all fired up about? Or do you not want to talk about it? You're fired up about something? Jay well, I don't really. I I, I'm Thank so you. mad that I don't even want to talk about it. How about okay. that? We can skip it. But I'm wait, 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 wait. Is, are you mad at anybody on this show? No. Yes. Oh. oh. I forgot I wasn't supposed to say that. Only your testicle, Frank. <laughs> you're mad at one of my testicles? <laughs> yep. Which Frank, one? They're both so nice. Did your testicles blow up? Let's see them. Because uh, I don't believe you. If you're, I think you're covering up for the big pharma. You were bought and paid for. That's... Definitely. I'm sitting comfortably. <laughs> All right. I missed this the other night. But Megan Fox said that she wore the dress that she yes. wore. Because Machine Gun tell Kelly told her to. And that she does whatever daddy says. Oh, that's gross. She called him daddy. Uh, is... I've I've obviously heard women say this before. Yeah, it, but that's just uh, what is what is well first let's hear what what let's it's twenty six uh, minutes. Twenty six so, seconds. I saw before you did, I saw another Simpsons thing that reminded me of uh, of the dress. There's oh, a Simpsons funny. meme of Homer oh, where kind of wearing the dress. Is that Homer like like on the floor? That's funny. He, he, he 
pulls the curtain and passes out and, and gets knocked out and, and he's that's a shower curtain on him frank they just announced new iphones they're really good are you going to join the rest of society and get one or no yeah right Oh, I'm not gonna. You know, I I think iPhones cause your testicles to blow yeah, up, so I'm true. not gonna. That's true. I'm not gonna fall into that scam. I've I've heard that. That's that's actually pretty true. All right, here's Nick. Here's. here's oh, they think uh, they call them apples. They swell to the size of apples. All right, here here's the uh, here's the clip of Megan, calling, uh, dickhead here, daddy. He was like. Valentine, are you guys going to collaborate more when it comes to your music videos in the future? I mean, yeah, he's not allowed to have other hoes in his music video. <laughs> it's the queen or no one. He was like, you're going to be naked. So, so it's hard to pin down who's in charge. There. <laughs> she's, yeah. she's the queen, but he's daddy. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. There's queens, there's daddies, there's video hoes. I don't know what's happening. He's here. a talented little boy or whatever the hell she said. All I know is, is those two are probably fucking twice a day minimum it feels yeah. like there's four times i'd say minimum there's a lot of sex going on there but isn't it weird to call somebody who's like half your age daddy isn't that a little weird I feel like it's weird to call anybody that but that's just personal preference yeah. oh, okay frank yes okay <laughs> no but, that's for me i'm not judging anybody else but it's just not it's not uh, my bag it sounded like a lot of judgment there no judgment. you know it's weird though you you hear the women call the guy daddy or the guy call the other guy daddy but you never hear anybody go mommy that's what's weird about that it's like that, think? that little kink doesn't go or at least not yeah, that i've heard it of. doesn't it doesn't i bet that happens more with like dominatrix stuff and you know. know what um it does but there's like a thing like if you're talking to your friends, you can be like, oh, my God, he's such a daddy. You can't be like, oh, my God, she's such a mommy. You would say, like, oh, my God, he's such a daddy. In, referring to what, though? Like. In what way? A hot dad. Oh, if he's really a dad. No, but like. I think she means like anybody like 30 and older that's like hot. You can say, is it right? Am I having oh, that it's right? like milk. I mean, they don't have to be a mom. They're just no older. No, it's it's a look. It's a certain look. I don't I don't even know. Like they don't have to literally be me, a dad. Me, me and my me and my gay friend were talking once at work. Well, not just once, but we would say he would say, "Oh God, he's a daddy," and I'd be like, "Yeah, he definitely is like such a daddy." Okay, yeah, and that, see, that just means like we don't know about. We're not yeah, about into. I mean, it's does like, that mean like a, like the like the 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 what's the word like the dominant partner in the relationship? No. That, that's like, not what that means like he looks like a hot dad so it's a dad it's a dad look yeah it's like a dad look but like a hot dad look i feel like the only equivalent really is milf milf exactly it's yeah the opposite of milf is da hot dad is daddy or daddy yeah i mean i guess i i, I think that's the closest comparison that's that we're aware of come up with. but it in that video which i've seen probably six times already it almost feels like she wanted to call him daddy on purpose to the world to make it known that she calls him daddy because she was saying it and she was like oh yeah daddy no daddy whatever daddy wants me to wear yeah like you know right. like she wanted she wanted the world to know that she calls him daddy oh yeah or she wouldn't have said it absolutely she had a she had to make a special throwback to the, yeah. oh wait wait one more thing right yeah, I don't get that. I, I I don't get the whole thing. It's very I, it's the I, attention. They're just grabbing the attention. Uh, yeah, no, I, I mean, I, I get it. I I, I see a, I see like a lot of this, but I, I don't you know, I don't know. It doesn't doesn't register with me. That's not your me. thing either. Someone's father is da a daddy. I wonder if father thro gets thrown into the mix. Like in our group, you mean? No, oh, yeah. One of our. Uh... Uh, you know who. Oh. What? Wait, what's you know whose you know whose dad is a daddy? Tone Bone. Yeah. Oh, the yeah. boner. Yeah, sure. He's a he's a crazy he... old man to me. I don't I don't see. Yeah, a daddy that's, there. that's he's a, he's a granddaddy. 
<laughs> even better. Even better. Okay. Even better. I, I, but she, I mean, I, they're trying so hard with her tweet the other day about the table, what the table saw, and all that shit. I, this is starting yeah. to occupy a lot of my mind now. Like, oh, like what are they going to say now? I'm sure what it does. Crazy oh, shit are they going to say next? This this is rem- this is like um wicka, wicka. it kind of reminds me of like the uh, the Courtney Stodden and the, and like Pamela Anderson like there's just attention just to get the attention you know who, like who was the first person you said Courtney Stodden the fuck is that she was the the girl that married the guy from the Green Mile remember the older guy no. she's like the the model remember I don't that? know her she was like 16 but married the older really older guy. Oh really? But it was all consensual and all you know. The, everybody signed off on it and stuff. I don't know. And she was seen as a real gross bastard. But Ooh. you don't I remember don't this, know. Courtney Stodden? Okay. But isn't it weird to be calling him daddy, then calling yourself the queen? Like I, like I don't know if he's really fully in charge here. It doesn't feel like it. I don't think so. But especially I, since she's the older one. Right. I don't yeah. know. He's acting very. He acts very. What's the word? Like. Okay, that's the other part. He's not a confident. bitch. Bitch is right. the word you're looking for. Right. He he's looks not like a confident. bitch. He's always his hands all over her. And you're not, when you do that, you're, you're not as confident in your relationship. Like, I, I don't see a dominating okay. daddy when I look at this guy in a sparkling jacket with, with stuff that my daughter plays with stuck on his face. You know, that kind of shit. And, and he just doesn't look, he's, you know, he was a half a second away from being bitch slapped by conor mcgregor i don't find him to be a daddy i I can say in all confidence i would i would drop fucking machine gun kelly in a second i don't have a fighting bone in my body i'd fuck that guy up in a second i agree in a split second i don't think you could be a daddy and 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 you know get your ass kicked so fucking i think fast. i think uh megan fox would kick your ass but machine gun kelly probably well, not. been in all those movies and shit so that there's a little right, exactly. That. There's a little bit of truth to that, but yeah, I just that stuck out to me the way she said "daddy" so hard. It was very yeah, like it's a little too much, a little trying too hard. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I agree. Uh, they're remaking the Bodyguard, which is uh, a sign of they've literally run out of good movies to remake, so they're just going <laughs> to move over to the shitty pile. Hey, Bodyguard was good, was it? It was good. Okay. It won a bunch of awards. I forget what it was about. But I have nothing. It's pretty nothing. self-explanatory. She's a singer. He's the bodyguard. They fall in love. Right. Okay. I, you you got I... it. You nailed it. But there's a stalker, and her life's in danger, and he protects her, and blah, blah, blah. Does she Let me call tell you something Daddy? about that movie. <laughs> Daddy guard. Okay. Let me tell you something about that movie. Yes. Sleeping by a girl's house. I think it was in sixth grade. And it was a whole bunch of girls sleeping over, and her older sister was watching the movie. I think I downstairs. saw this video. Oh no, I'm sorry. I'm, never mind. Go ahead. <laughs> her older Go ahead. sister was watching this this movie downstairs with her friends, and I I wanted to see this movie, but you know I wasn't allowed to in sixth grade. Don't know why. There's nothing, you know. It's like they not... do have sex. They have sex in it. And... Yeah, but there's no like nudity or anything. And she says something to Kevin Costner, like, yeah, but you want to fuck me? And I was like this, <gasps> in the doorway, like, sorry, well, I stood there and watched it for another 10 minutes, and I was like, I gotta watch this movie. <laughs> it's a good movie. <laughs> in sixth grade. In sixth okay. grade? It's a good I'll movie. never forget that. Is never. that. Is that where the filter just came off of little J. Sabs, and she was like, yep. I'm just gonna say crazy shit now? You know what? We could trace it all way, all the way back to the bodyguard. Yep, wow. like a lightning bolt to wow. the house. I like that. that was a good one. Um, Matthew Lopez is a Tommy, Tommy, Tony nominated playwright. Uh, he wrote the Inheritance, and uh, he's been hired to reimagine the bodyguard. Ooh, reimagine. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'd love to know who who's gonna get cast in this. Yeah, really, I'm just gonna say. Four hundred million dollars. Uh, it grossed worldwide box office. But here's the thing: I think that's just a shitty movie with one of the greatest soundtracks of all time. That fucking soundtrack. The movie was decent. It was a good movie. You have to rewatch. It was it. Action. Uh, there was her doing concerts and stuff, and a lot of like, you know, he had to like jump in and rescue her, and 
We're talking Maybe. about the one with Whitney Houston and Kevin Costner. We right? are. Okay. That's just yeah. her her cock teasing him. You know, it's good good movie. Right. I think his name was Frank in that, so that's another reason I like it. Uh, now it all makes sense. Yeah. But uh, who would you cast in it today? Beyonce. As, Ooh. as Whitney. That's good. That's not bad. And Machine Gun <laughs> Kelly as, <laughs> as Daddy. <laughs> as Daddy. Playing the role of Daddy. What about Lady Gaga? Mm. That'd be good. But I feel like Jennifer Hudson can wail like Whitney. She would be the closest, like, singing type. Do you think Jennifer sure. Hudson and Beyonce just fucking hate each other because they probably are up for every leading probably black female Maybe. role that's in yep. Hollywood? Like, they're each getting the same. Like, when they send out scripts, they're like, just send one to J uh, send one to uh, her and Ooh, her. J-Lo would be. But Beyonce doesn't act as much as, as uh, Jennifer Hudson, right? I think I Jennifer like... Hudson's a better actor than... Yeah. Beyonce. Well, Beyonce, she's not in much. She was in a lot of shit. Well, they were in Dreamgirls together. Yeah, a handful, maybe four or five movies. I don't know. She was in Austin Powers, Gold Member. Yeah, that was oh, rough. Oh, God. That was rough. But, uh, yeah, I think you pick any any really good singer can, can do it. I mean, but if you want someone as good as Whitney Houston, you got to, there's only a handful. I feel like it's only Jennifer Hudson. I don't think anybody else can hold a yeah. candle to her. Maybe Bradley Cooper as the bodyguard. See, they already did that. Uh, they did that movie. Yeah, but see, it's 2021. I think it's going to be Laverne Cox. And there you go. I think it's Laverne Cox in both roles. Like an Ed Murphy something. thing. Yeah. She's going to be the bodyguard and the singer. Count me 12 bucks lighter. And she's going to... That's... I want to apologize to the LGBTQ community for that comment. <laughs> What? I like to support Laverne Cox, okay? I'm like, so you. what is that? I said t twelve bucks lighter, meaning I'm going to see the movie. Oh, I mis I misinterpreted it. Then I thought you meant you were going to keep your money. No, lighter. I I'm sorry. I'm money. so used to all your uh, anti home uh, your homo your, you know yeah. yeah go ahead. No, no, we'll give you another shot at that. Go ahead. I wanted to say homophobic, but I I already committed to the anti part. You're, you're an ass. <laughs> anti homophobic. I'm assophobic, which is you. <laughs> Norm Macdonald died. That sucks, man. Who knew? Did he kept it, no. He kept uh, it a secret. secret. Yeah, nine and years to too. Wow, that sucks. He was a he's a funny bastard. That was the most shocking thing to me that he kept this quiet for nine fucking right? years. Unbelievable. How does that happen? I had a cancer scare two years ago. I fucking called everybody. I don't know what was wrong. I was like panicking. I was, you had a I was cancer panic. Scare? I'm kidding. What you yeah. were like? You were like. <laughs> He called your friend in seventh grade when I stole your homework. I'm really sorry. <laughs> I literally me? never apologized to me for that. No, I literally uh, do quickly for people. They I, I had some weird tests. So they send me they go, you got to go to this other thing. So I go, OK, I show up. I don't even know where it is. It's like New York cancer and blood. And I'm like, oh, fuck, what? this is kind of weird. And then like I go through the whole rigmarole and the, the, the doctor goes, there's a 90 percent chance you have this type of cancer. And I was like, fuck. So we had to go through the biopsy and all that shit. But that night I go, I'm not telling anybody. This is, you know, I'm going to just keep this to myself. This is like, you know, we'll wait and see. The next morning I woke up in a panic. I'm like, I have to tell everybody I know. I, it was the weirdest fucking thing that, that I was just like, because that, that's not my style too. I'd rather just Norm McDonald it, which I'm going to do next time I get cancer. Just oh, oh thanks. That'll, that'll be great. Nice sudden. Nice, yeah. uh, nice doctor that said you have 90% chance that you have this. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But it turned out the ten percent was right. Yeah, that was and the weirdest part about just it. Just because yeah. your bowls were blown up proportionately, disproportionately, <laughs> doesn't mean that you have cancer. <laughs> then I go unless to, you have nut cancer. I go to get the what do they call the biopsy? They gotta scoop the thing out from underneath. I go to the guy, I'm like, I don't know, what do you think? He goes, It doesn't look good. Oh shit. Because I'm not supposed to tell you, but it doesn't look great. I'm like, fuck, okay. Oh god. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. That's... Yeah, you're. They, there was something I forget what it was, and it, they were symmetrical and four. The four things were symmetrical in a in a, a scan, and they, it was fucked up. Yeah, like, not symmetrical is is bad. Yeah, asymmetrical yeah. is not yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so anyway, nine how years. Did he keep it a secret. I don't know, but um, what's his name? Rob. What's his name? The comedian. 
that he's friends with. What's his Rob name? Schneider? Yeah. Oh, my God. I read his goodbye. I cried. Really? I was like, oh, Rob Schneider? Like, because I like Rob Schneider. I think he's, I think he's a good guy. He's hysterical. Well, he's an anti-vaxxer. I get it. He, you, you see no. Him at the is he really? There you go. I didn't know that, but. You guys carpool? <laughs> to the meetings. <laughs> he's a, whatever he wrote, hats off. Yeah, it's, this sucks, man. Yeah, he's 61. That is too young. That Way too young, especially for how funny. Here's the thing. I'll say it. You're, you're both afraid to say it. We're stuck with so many assholes, and we lose fucking Norm One of the Donald. good ones. Right. Yeah. That guy. Uh, my wife was reading something, an article about him that uh, a lot of comedians are like, oh, I had the opportunity to, to, uh, to stand up on a night he was doing it. But that was not that was very common like he did stand up all the time he was always at clubs yeah so everybody got to know him you know so he was he was always around and always doing it because that's what he loved to do and, and he did it non-stop so that was his thing writing yeah he did movies and tv and stuff but he loved doing stand-up all right here's rob schneider um was this it janine yeah he said, Norm, I didn't just like you. I loved you. You didn't just make me laugh. You made me cry with laughter. I'm still crying today. But when I think of you, my tears will run down my face with all the memories of all the laughter and all the joys that you brought to all of us. Rest. Yeah. And he had, I, like, he had not only, I'm going to say he had a unique voice. Like, eh, oh, of course. Yes. But I mean, unique voice by like his perspective like he's one of those guys like you look now at like mark norman or some of the guys coming up like there's very few people that have a specific like distinct point of voice view. yeah if somebody or perspective point of view however you want to say it and when somebody does an impression of them you know immediately who they're doing yeah, like, yeah. an impression of i thought it was amazing like if you look back on it now you don't know how this happened but the reason he was fired from snl is so ridiculous do you remember so i i don't think this has actually been confirmed but i've heard the rumors go ahead you're gonna you'll yeah say. well uh, this is what i heard is it not confirmed he um he was doing a joke on um weekend update about which is when oj just went yeah right after oj was found not guilty he went on and he goes uh this just in Murder is now legal in Los Angeles. <laughs> and that was the joke he made on SNL. And that's apparently the reason he got fired. Maybe I, maybe I read it wrong, but I thought that was the reason. Yeah. Um, no, I think that that was it because he didn't get renewed. Yeah. Right. Okay. Like, so he didn't get renewed. Like his contract came up and he didn't get renewed and nobody really explained why. And then I think like it was like two years later that they had him back as a host so okay i don't know what but everybody seems to, so nobody really knows why and i feel like he's never talked about it and i remember hearing something with colin quinn because i think didn't colin quinn follow him on weekend update that sounds right and i think colin quinn talked about it and he might have been the one that threw the i think it was like an oj joke or something and then that's kind of been the story but nobody's ever really confirmed, confirmed. yeah yeah Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That. I mean, everybody. I feel like everybody. I mean, it's not like it was an uncommon opinion about OJ. So, like, what the? You know. Yeah. Why would they let him go based on that? Yeah. You know what? Dumb. You know what made me cry, uh, and I, I had forgotten about this, but um, the very the uh, Norm was the last comedian guest on Letterman's uh, show. Oh yeah. Oh God. And please, at the end, please, you know, I saw that. Please, no, you no. saw that. Norm started <laughs> no. crying. Yeah, because he he so he did a thing and he thanked him and he was crying and please, like Letterman could you know Letterman he has got no fucking feelings that guy he couldn't <laughs> handle it, but it was such a beautiful like he loved Letter and he played Letterman on SNL, you yeah. know, and he had he, you could tell like Letterman was an influence on him early on because um, I forgot about that. That was great. His impression of Letterman. Yeah, and Norm, has, he's got that cadence too. He's got that, like, yeah, you, you know, you know, yeah. you know, you know, like that little thing. 
That's a Letterman and a and a Norm thing, but Norm had it took it to the extreme. I love the, one of my favorite bits. Actually, my brothers too. We we both grew up watching him on SNL, and one of the best things. It was out of nowhere, but it was so funny from to me. Was the you guessed it, Frank Stallone. Remember oh, those bits? Yeah. Whenever there was a story, like you know what and what caused the the earthquake in Oklahoma, whatever the hell it was, you yeah. guessed it. Frank Stallone, and they would just show a picture of Frank Stallone, <laughs> and it was every time it would get you, it would just catch you off guard. It was so funny. Yeah. And Frank uh, Stallone actually wrote a little thing on his. Uh, he wrote a little goodbye, uh, and he was like, "I thought it was hysterical." You know, he was he was laughing at it. He thought it was a, a good joke. Yeah, he did. I could, well, I think Frank Stallone loved it. I think he yeah loved, he loved that bit. Yeah, he loved that bit. Um, I, I was talking to a friend of mine today and he said, he said, it's so shitty that Norm Macdonald died. He's like, but the takeaway is the amount of Norm Macdonald clips that is circulating the internet. And yeah. it is so true. Like a thousand people I know posted the clip of him on with Conan when he was shitting on, uh, the Melrose place actress and the, Oh yeah. The, you didn't see that one. Frank? I don't know that. What is that? One of the actresses in Melrose place. I forget her name. But she was in a movie with who is the prop comic, Janine? Carrot Top. Oh yeah, yes. And she's like plugging the movie and Norm just wants to shit on the fact that she's in a carrot top movie. Like nobody's gonna see it. <laughs> and so he's going on and on. And like Con you can tell Conan's getting a little upset. Like like he's she's a guest, and you know, she's whatever. And uh so Conan's like wrapping up the interview after he was just like shitting on it like three or four times. And uh Conan goes, all right, well, you know, look out for this uh, movie yet to be titled movie. And so the actress goes, oh, no, it's called Chairman of the Board. Like, it's like they had just named it like that afternoon. Oh, God. And so Conan looks at um, looks at Norm and goes, try making something out of that, you creep. And so, the, like, everybody laughs over what Conan said. And, like, as soon as the laugh dies down, Norm leans in. He goes, I bet you they spelled board B-O-R-E-D. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> it was That's fantastic. Awesome. Yeah, it was really, it was really, really awesome. You know what's crazy too? Um, I don't know if I'm gonna find it now, but oh yeah, look, it'll pop up really quick. I saw this quote too, which was like, it was really mind blowing. I don't know when he said this. Um, no, this wasn't it. Fuck, I, there was a quote, I want to say Tina Fey put it out of his, but it was something where it's like, uh, when you die from cancer. Oh, yeah, I know this quote, yeah. He, he saw it, right? What was it, Frank? The cancer dies too. Well, so cancer dies too, so it's a draw. It's a draw, yeah. Mm. Says, I'm no doctor, but when you die, the cancer dies too, so it's a draw. Yeah. Technically, it's a draw. The fucking perspective that you have to have to come up with that. Yeah analysis is just right. beyond it is just beyond amazing uh final topic on the show tonight the uh civil so if you want to share your favorite uh norm moments in the comments or tweet at us please do so i've been watching norm fucking clips like crazy like every bit of it is funny by the way there was a time where he literally couldn't really get work and i, I think he popped up on netflix for a little bit but he had his own like internet show and that was one of the greatest like if you look up the Norm Macdonald show on YouTube, like watch that because that was like finally that moment where you have a guy who came and went through movies, didn't really do much, came and went. They tried to give him 20 sitcoms. He's not a sitcom fucking guy. He's a guy that you just put a camera on him, give him a guest and let him just be fucking funny. And that's what he was in this like Norm Macdonald. And you could tell he was like in this like makeshift like studio and everything. It was just. It was one of my, it was some of my favorite Norm McDonald's moments was that stupid Norm McDonald show. So check that out. Legend. Um, last thing here, the civilian space launch. Uh, SpaceX had a great idea. They're going to just send four fucking people into outer space that have, that are not. So are they going to do the same thing that, uh, what's his face did? They're just going to go up for five minutes and come back down? No, I think in, in they're. In a penis shaped ship? <laughs> Sign I... me up. I think they are uh, going up for a, a while, if I'm not mistaken. Um, 
They launched from Kennedy Space Center just prior to the beginning of the podcast here. First all-civilian crew, which includes billionaire businessman Jared Isaacman, who paid for the trip. Physician assistant and cancer survivor Haley Arsenu, who raised money for St. Jude's uh, Hospital and a couple of other people. Um, 14 people are now in orbit, I guess as of right now, 14 people are now in orbit on SpaceX Crew Dragon spaceship. That sounds like uh, Mountain Dew had a hand in naming that. Mm-mm. I don't huh? get it. You know how that Mountain Pardon? Peach Cola drink, whatever the hell, oh. that Dragon Fruit Punch? Yeah. Shut up. Next. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so 14 people are in space now on a SpaceX thing. Yeah. And they're all civilians. None of them are trained astronauts. No, but they're so all I'm assuming there. this thing is autopilot and they're just up there for the ride. No one has to do anything. That's fun, I guess. I mean, is there other than sending civilians into space? What's the is there a goal or is it just to go up? Yeah, who well, dies first. What'd you say? You guys who, who, who dies, dies first? first? Oh, yeah, I think that's it. It's going to become Lord of the Flies. Just stranded. I mean, like. Them. That's not really like a goal in my life. Like to go into space. Yeah, it's not really like something that like I don't think it's a goal in a lot of people's lives. This is not attainable for ninety nine point nine 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 percent of the population. I'd rather meet an alien and let him probe me than go into outer space. Hot. But would you call him daddy? Ooh. Absolutely. oh yeah. I'll I'm sure daddy. there's a lot of a lot of alien daddies out there. <laughs> there's a lot of alien daddies out there. Uh, Do they I have the dad say, gut, the dad bod? It doesn't say how long they're going to be up there, but I think they're going to be up there for a while. Have a good time. Do you know they're speeding around the Earth at five miles per, per second. second? Damn. Oh, they friggin' move, man. Jeez. Anything that, anything up there. It's because in order to maintain orbit without being sucked back into Earth, that's you got to go that fast. Do people like want to do it because of like no gravity there? Like is that? Plus, you're in space. I mean, it's you're I not mean, on the like, planet anymore. That's that's kind of cool to say. I mean, right? But like, you can do one of those like anti gravity things at like I don't know amusement park nowadays. I guess you know. Is it the I agree with Janine. It is a little too much buzz around this going into outer space uh, shtick. Like you see, can get. <sighs> I, I'm all for going into outer space, but what they got to do is make the windows bigger. Every time they go into outer space, the window is like this big. Well, that's that's what I mean. Like, were you just in a ship? So, I mean, like... Yeah, it doesn't really feel... Give, give me, like, a, a big dome on the top of the yeah. thing that you can look around. Right. Let me see some like aliens banging. Right. Let me see or some aliens, aliens banging. banging. Right. Different story. Who's the first person to have sex in outer space? You think that's already happened, or...? Yeah. Ooh, all the space stations up there. I'm sure they're banging in the space station. Had to have, right? By now, it probably looks like a snow globe. But you can't really talk about it because if nobody really has, so that's kind of that sucks, you know. And here's another thing: the food's gonna suck up there. So why would you even want to? Why would you even want to be there? That's true. I've had yeah, this is like sucks. none of this sounds appealing at all. <laughs> Sorry. See, you know they're using. Yeah, I guess that. Why can't you bring? I mean, if you're only up there for a couple of days, why can't you bring normal food like a bag of chips? Because you can't take a shit. Sure, you can. They do shits up there. Yeah, but there's like they have like liquid astronaut shits up there from their stupid astronaut food. They don't That's have why liquid shits. No, they do. They poop in a thing and it sucks it out. Yeah, but they just get, barely keep you alive. You can't be taking a fucking onion ring shit up in outer space. You could take an onion ring shit. <laughs> <laughs> you know how many shits are floating around in space right now? <laughs> too many shits to discuss. It's way too many. Uh, three days they're going to be in outer space. By the way, three days. So. Longer okay. than that, that fucking Virgin Atlantic guy. That's for sure. That's a, that's a long time. But I'm with Janine. It's so romantic. You see it all the time. Like, my dream is to go in. Or even Bezos and all their bullshit. And they were, oh, I just well, I dreamed about touching outer space. And fuck you. Like, who gives a shit? You know what I mean? Like, like Janine said, we can get that same sensation at fucking Six Flags Great Adventure. I don't need to go to fucking outer space to feel that. Yeah, but you're zoom. Imagine being in a ship going five miles per second and looking down 
at Earth. I mean, that's that's got to be intense. No, I'm not saying it's not cool. And if somebody walked into, you know, into my house, if Bezos was like, Aunt, I picked you, you can go. I'd be like, all right, fuck it, let's go. But I, I'm not sitting here like yearning. You're not, yeah, you're not well, it's not for it. Yeah. yeah, you're also not yearning to be a I don't know a fireman or a cop. That's true. You don't have that yearning. You know, you're just not your thing. But people want to go into space. That's why we're doing it. But I don't sit there and like wonder. Like I feel like it's so unrealistic that I don't sit there and just go. I wonder what it's like. And plus, it's, it's like it's... I don't know. It's not like when the man first landed on the moon. You know what I mean? It's yeah. And really, what much more have we done from that? Hello. Yeah. We sent stuff Hello. to Mars. Yeah, sent... but like, I don't know. I just feel like it's like we sent probes all the way out to Pluto. If you I didn't get me, probed. If you gave me, please, I'm, if you want to talk about cold streaks? We're gonna have a cold streak in this house right now. Uh, Ooh, it, a little, little glimpse into your life. Bunch of kids <laughs> visiting parents. It was, it was the thing visiting parents. Hello. Some more. Be. I know. Anyway, here's what I was gonna say. If you gave me a choice between going into outer space for three days or for one time having Megan Fox call me daddy, I'm going to pick the Megan Fox one all every day. I would pick Megan Fox over that, too. Thank you. Thanks just for your honesty. Just say just she just looks at you or calls you on the phone and says, hey, daddy. That's no, it. it had to be in person. She just had to look at me. She just has to look at you and go, hi, daddy. Yeah. What? what does she have to say? No, uh, I don't know. This isn't really my thing. I just kind of, I didn't really think about it. Um, stroke your. Mm. She has to say, well, "What do you want me to do, Daddy?" That would be nice. Yeah, but that, that's it. Obligation ends there. Yeah. You're done. Yeah. You don't even have to answer her. Mm, yeah. If I had to pick that between outer space and that, I'd pick that. That's. Because here's the thing: I could probably, if I really put my mind to it, figure out the outer space thing. Getting yeah. Megan Fox to do this without this insane proposition is never going to happen. Yeah, but uh, you, you're, you're in tune with a whole bunch of audio technology. You could probably just make it happen on your own. That's true. If I wait another five years, Spielberg will come up with a way to fucking, you know. You could probably do it now. You take the audio that you, you just played about her. You, you could probably. You're right, Frank. Thanks. Thanks, buddy. Thanks Don't waste your time. Go into space. Pumping me up here. I uh, appreciate that. You could fake it. Uh, that's it for me. Anybody got anything else? Janine, do you want to you want to uh, sound off or are you good? You you tell me. Floor is yours if you want it. If you don't, it's okay. Um, Hochul is a cunt. Good night. <laughs> well, you can't just leave it there now. Wow. People are going to be like wondering. People don't even know who the fuck Hochul is. <laughs> yeah, is it Hochul or Hochul? I thought it was Hochul. Oh, I, was, I thought it was Hochul. The current was... governor of New York? Mm. Yes. We're talking about? Okay. Yes. Yeah. So what 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 did she do to you? Mm. Oh, you want me to elaborate? You don't have to. You don't have to do anything. You well, don't have to talk so, about it if you don't want. So she put a new mandate um, today that all child care, daycares, and preschoolers have to wear a mask. And I am not okay with that. You mean the kids have to? wear Yeah, the kids. I'm sorry. Yes. And I am not okay with that at all. No. Nope. Why? Why am I not okay with it? Or why did she put it into play? No. Why are you not okay with it? Because there is no reason for my three-year-old to wear a mask. Oh, Jay. <laughs> Jay Saps is mad. <laughs> um, the biggest thing is last year when almost none of the teachers were vaccinated yet, the kids didn't have to wear a mask. And now since most, if not all the teachers have to be vaccinated, why wear a mask now? Well, There's it's not about the vaccine. It's about stopping. It's, it's still can spread. Right. Vaccine or no vaccine. But here's the thing. It's not spreading between toddlers. There is no, there is more, there is more children who have died in Chicago last year of gunshots than kids under 18. Maybe, but th they can also sp carry it and spread it, no? But, th yeah, they can, but it's not it's not as much as adults. Maybe not. And what is the point? So, if say, it, it, oh, here, here's another thing, too. 
it's been known that and stated that kid kids who are getting it are not getting it within schools. They're getting it in after school activities. Okay. In um like private gatherings and parties. So if and school just started like a week ago. So if child A in household A went to a party, gets it, and then goes to school. Now Wait, child is it party B, A or party B? I'm party A. Go ahead. Cardi? Hosted by Cardi B. <laughs> if child A goes gets it from party A, goes to school, now child B is not wearing a mask, passes it over to child B, child B now comes home and passes it to household B. I think okay, is, but is if, the problem. If, they if, might be fine. The kids might be okay and not even get feel a symptom. But it's just spreading it. But the whole thing is if they're if their family is vaccinated, then then why should we? Why? What's the big deal? Did what if their no, family isn't? There's no like science yours. supporting the reason why she's doing this, and that's the whole thing. That's the big problem. And no, my child has never worn a mask, nor do I want her to. It's so, a lot of it's a lot of other things besides that. Just simply wearing a mask. It's. Um, development of facial expressions and all of that. So that's like yeah. a huge thing. I think we shouldn't have gotten to this point. I either. don't want to speak out of turn, but your child should be wearing a mask. <laughs> Just kidding. But I agree that we shouldn't have gotten even gotten to this point. I think this should have been. Well, I'm hoping that it a while gets, ago, but we're it not gets there reversed yet. because they. Uh, Cuomo tried to do this back in May and within a day it was reversed because the amount of complaints that they got because it was just out of control. So, well, that's, you know, here's, here's the thing. I think you brought up a really good point in where, what, where is the, where is the science? Where are the scientists? Where are the doctors? Where's their, here's our list of information that we have and why we think that this is important to do. Cause I, I, I'm not saying it's not out there, but I haven't seen it. You know, well, what I, are you looking for? I mean, you're looking for a reason why groups of people standing together in indoors should wear masks. That's out there. Yeah. Because like Janine was pointing out, there is something to the fact that children because they're so young, you know, in their yeah, state, they're reacting to facial expression and, sure. you know, they enunciating and like people who have speech problems and trying to learn how to speak correctly and all of that. So, yeah, it's better and, than breathing problems is probably their point, <laughs> but they're not getting. But that's the whole point. They're not getting as sick as it's better than are. spreading it to your family and giving them breathing problems. No, but I mean, even not even problem. not even that they're not they're not. <laughs> well, you're even not really, vaccinated, so it is your problem. But they're not but even I'm really. With it. But they're not even really getting it, though. That was that was the that was the amazing thing about this from the beginning was why aren't kids like kids just don't seem to be. It might not affect them as much because their immune systems are so good that you know they're, they're, the are kids' fine. immune systems are not good. <laughs> They well, they're literally they, they literally get anything. Like kids are walking germs and that's just Oh that's yeah, they're just walking fact. germs, but they're not sick all the time as much as Well, and then the other thing too to consider is, you know, and I understand again, I understand what both of you guys are saying, but when you look at what's going on in the state of New York, and like let's just take Long Island specifically, and I'm you know, everybody's could look at their own areas for this. But you look at Long Island and eighty percent of people are vaccinated in Suffolk County, seventy five percent are vac vaccinated in Nassau County. This is probably a bit much to do in these particular areas. Like maybe one thing I'll say about Cuomo, did he grab a titty when he wasn't supposed to? Sure. But he also did slice up the state into regions. Like each region, like, yeah, exactly. And treated them with the data he was getting, you know, differently in each in each region. And that's probably a better approach than just going out and and blanketing the whole entire thing and saying we have to put three-year-olds 
you know, in a mask because well, it's pretty hard to do that. You know, was it was Cuomo's policy of, of doing that? Was it working? Were we stopping COVID? Well, I th- I mean, I think so, because if you're making not stopping it, but if you're making information, well, he they- called them. He called them hotspots. That's what he did. He right. Sure. Right. So like certain places weren't allowed to do thing, you know, free range as as the other places. But the problem with that is those people can go to other places and do other things. So, I mean, yeah, unless they stay in their own town, then that's a different story. But, but I don't you who's... can't you can't do it for the whole state, because let's be honest, on the tip of Long Island is not going to be the same uh, science as a Nassau County town or well, a Queens everybody. town. Jeanine Not is, everybody Jeanine goes is illustrating them. based off of population. It's a, it's where right. we are is a far less populated. But area. not everybody goes to a school in their town. Like someone's kids might go to a school 10 towns away. No. no. Yeah, we went our high school. But that's high school. We were, we're talking school. about you can give you could get you can you could bus to a, a different school. No, I know, but you were talking about three-year-olds. This isn't, you know, this... Well, what's the band-aid? It says all kids under what? All kids two and up must and wear up. a mask. So it's See, every... I don't even think you have that right, Gene. I read fetuses, too. They get in there and... Well, you, know. just, you, got, you never know what kind of germs yeah. mommy's right. bringing in there. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's um, I'll say this. My friend who is a pediatric nurse practitioner... It sounds made up, but go ahead. Mm-hmm. Is it her cousin? <laughs> Testicle, testicle. <laughs> she has a son who's two. Okay, huge in, testicles. What in I a guess. nursery school, <laughs> and he's not going to wear a mask. So, it's here's the thing: we are in a we're in a in a. Ooh, I can't even say it. I can't even say it. We are stuck. We are stuck right now because it's either we pull our kids or we make them wear a mask for absolutely no reason supported if here i'll I'll say this if these kids were actually getting sick like they were as as if they had the flu every time they got sick with covid different story but that's not happening right that's just not happening and even last year like they're like i said they Kids were not getting COVID from school. They were getting it from intimate parties. That was the number one way to catch it. So you you can't you can't tell someone, you can't tell a kid um, you have to wear a mask in school all day. But when you hang out with your thirty friends uh, or twenty friends at someone's house after school, then you don't have to wear one. That's where it gets. Here, okay, if you want if you want some numbers, uh, this CNN. No. Uh, NPR.org mm. published on August 10th. Audio version of CNN. Go ahead. No. <laughs> but uh, on August 10th, let's see. They said nearly 94,000 child cases of COVID 19 were recorded uh, during the week ending August 1st. Yes. This Up is 31% yes. from the week before. This is true because the Delta variant, they believe, is. And then in- up again more from the week before that. It went from 39,000 in one week. The second week was 72,000 cases. Then the third week was 94,000 cases in children. This was in now, August. Is this from the PCR test that they're saying that is not working now? <laughs> exactly, the rapid well, test. I mean, that's a whole that. other thing, too. Not even that's that. That's a whole other thing. And, and no child this should is be people getting in, yeah, sick. In hospitals. But, but you're talking about 94,000 people out of 365 million. I mean, that's... As a very still small percentage of yeah, but how many of how many kids in that three hundred and whatever million? I, I, even in, what, why do you want to say hundred million, eighty million? Okay, still, still a very still very. Ups, it's still sick kids that are spreading are yeah, getting I agree. higher I, and higher every week. I agree, but we're talking about two different things. You're talking about overall numbers in the country of children in a certain thing, and what I'm saying is is that's not the case in Suffolk County. That's not the case in Nassau County. But my point is every week it's going up by a huge percent. So this was a month and a half ago that it went up from 30 something thousand to 70 something thousand to 90 right. something thousand. No, and I'll, listen, weeks. I'm with you because here's the so thing. I'm just saying, you're saying there's no proof that kids are getting sick. I just showed you 
you know, people are getting, children are getting sick now. But here's the thing. When people were getting sick and then dying, it was like, hey, let's all mask up. I was down for that. But we're not really seeing nope, that. Yeah. Well, and that's that's exactly the point my friend made today. She said, when there was so many deaths, that's what we talked about then. And now we're talking about cases. There's no deaths now. There isn't. There's just no deaths now. There's no there's no, not to compare to 800 per day. Now it's what? I don't even know what it is. 30, 13. And mostly the people we don't like anyway. Let's be exactly. Honest. And they're not kids. So that's the whole point. Like you, you, you have to, what is the main reason that you want kids who are two and above to mask up? Tell me the reason. And, the, and she didn't really say so. Uh, she didn't say, and let, and let me just, let me tack this on too, while we wait to get uh, Jay Sav's back. I feel like that's the two minute warning. Like, she, yeah. <laughs> can I just on her on her point before I uh, okay? Got it. Got it. No, no, no. The death toll is fifteen hundred a day in the U.S. In the U.S., fifteen hundred a day. Yes, dying. Fifteen hundred. Yes, we were losing eight hundred people a day in New York. I have fifteen hundred. Fifteen hundred a day is still a pretty big number. It's still it is a very big number. I agree, but that's out of three hundred and sixty-five million people. You know, okay. and it's not kids. How many of those are three-year-olds? I don't know. I don't but, know how many are dying, but it's not about the individual. It's not always about the individual who gets it. It's about who they're passing it to. I agree. I, no, listen, I agree. It's a, you're dealing with it like you want to stick me in a mask. I'm a, I'm a man. I can. Take and that it. number, it's I'm ten thousand. It's ten thousand five hundred. Start, start putting it out there. Hopefully somebody will call it. Ten thousand five hundred deaths per week. That's a big number. And how many people US. die of other things? Too? I, I like, agree. So if we could stop, if we could stop some of them. Yeah. People die and we could we could stop obesity too, but we choose not to. <laughs> like that's like that's another thing to compare it to. And it's some of us are even choosing to champion that. I'm just I'm not going to name names, but <laughs> some of us. Me are. either. Is, uh, I just, don't even know why I argue because it's no no matter what I say. Well, let me say this. Well, let, no matter what shots. I say, no matter yeah. what I say either. So. I'm giving you facts. I'm giving you numbers, and you're like, well, that's uh, well, that's a small number. It's ten thousand it people a week. In well, the U.S. are dying from COVID. All right, let me say this. Let me, let me say this. I I recently had an exposure. I had somebody that I was with, and they called me up, and they go, I got COVID. You got to get tested now. And it was a very inopportune fucking time for me to do it, but I did it. Okay. And I came out negative. And when I went for the test, they said to me, were you in a room with this person consecutively or cumulatively for more than 15 minutes oh, within yeah. six feet of them is what they said to me. And I said to the doctor, I go, it was close. I go, it, you know, because I, I stood next to the person and we were looking at something. And then at one point I was talking with somebody else and they entered the room and they were next to me again. I was like, if it was around 15 minutes, it was it was just shy of that or at 15 it was right around that time. So I really don't know. So he said, OK, and that's and so we went to the test or whatever and I was negative and he had it. So my point being is. There are other ways to mitigate this amongst children, like keeping them separate than having them sit like masks to your point, Frank, if you want to keep everybody safe, I get it. We could maybe do that and not have them in masks. You could just keep them distance. So but then here's the other part of it. In reality, which we have to exist in. It's true because my, I see it with my children. They go through school all day and they're wearing masks and then they get out of school and they go see their friends and they play on the playground and they are next to each other. They have parties. They have play dates. People are living their lives. You know what I mean? So the precautions that she's taking, I get it. It's noble. It's not really realistic especially when you have such large portions of the population that are vaccinated, that are just going to live their lives now that they are protected. I don't think we need I, to affect the children in this I, particular instance. I get it, but I'm just saying the numbers are going up for children getting COVID. We're still at a, a point where 10,500 people are dying every week, 1,500 a day in the country. And, you know, if, if putting on a mask 
Hell, if you don't want to put on a mask, would you rather have them still work, still uh, do homeschool? You know. Uh... Well, that's the even bigger problem because Janine's kids, in particular, need to be away from her as much as possible. <laughs> that's, what my, that's what my that's what my wife. Mean, what said. would you recommend to to to? I mean, if masks aren't the answer, what, what, like, come up with an idea. What's an that's idea? So much more of the joke there, and I couldn't fucking finish it. I'm sorry. Did I no, the idea is the idea is to just keep them separate. You can just keep them separate. Well, if you have a class with 30 kids, how do you keep them separate? No, what there's a... only eight kids in my kids class. That's a big room or how big is the room? It's a pretty it's a good size room. All right, it, well not every classroom. But the thing is, I guess it it matters I think specifically what you care about, not you, but I mean like you. Like my concern, if my kid gets COVID, have they been known to get extremely sick like the, like the flu? If no, I'm okay. I, I, like, here's the thing, too. Like, I'm not scared of getting COVID for myself. I'm not. I, and funny. I've said this before. I'm not. And if, like I said, if the kids were getting extremely sick and dying from COVID, that's a different story. But they are not, and that is just the facts. It if, is not. So let me ask fact. you this question. That's though. not the fact. Let me get you. Let me. They're ask you not this getting question. extremely. Like, okay. But they're not. I just showed you that they. They're. I, I understand. The cases they're are rising. They're more. There's more cases than there was three weeks ago. That is true. But the, the the truth of the matter is, is that children are just flat out not really dying from this. If children were dying from this, it would be front page news. All right. the time, every day. It'd be a different story, and it, but that's the whole thing. They're not. Hey, they might catch it more, but they're not dying from it. Well, then they're they're not. They, 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 petri dishes because they're just spreading it to other people. Tell me about it. But they believe that's the case because their they their their vaccines now are not like the vaccines that we had when we were kids. Their vaccines are m mRNA or whatever it is. The same the same makeup of the of the COVID vaccine is what their regular vaccines were when they were born. So people think there's a theory that they're this is the reason why kids aren't getting sick is because they have a high rate of antibodies because of their regular kid vaccines that they've been getting. So from you're birth. saying the, so it's a vaccine that helps is what you're saying. <laughs> yes, it was. It's the vaccine that helps. But the point oh, that gee, I was who could have saw that coming. The point that I was trying to make. So I can, I can remember the point now because I yep. fucking forgot it. <laughs> What was the Probably point? Because of the vaccine. Trying. Oh, here's here, no. I was. It was a question. It wasn't even a point. Janine, do you fear? Is your answer might be different than mine? Maybe because I'm a big fat pussy. But do you fear your kids getting sick at all? Because even though I agree with everything that you're saying, and I believe that they can keep the kids safe and distance, and in reality, the kids are playing with them. You know, playing with other kids, anyways, after school. Part of me still feels. And fears that my kid will be the one out of a billion who gets it and gets it really. Like, I still worry about that to this day. Still worry about it. I mean, like, besides not the fact to, like, that I... Not live my life. We still go out and do things, but I still fucking... It's on my mind. I'm sorry to say, but I don't. Okay. I don't. And maybe because I was a statistic already with what happened with my first. So maybe that's what it is, too. Like, who knows? That's just it's it doesn't it doesn't make me scared from what i've read from uh medical professionals that i know and see this all the time every day no i'm not i just i i could be called ignorant but i'm just not because i've read some stuff i mean i know there's like rashes like some some kids are getting it and getting sick sick I, I don't see a lot of them. There have been some deaths. There have been some child yeah, the deaths. The kids aren't they getting as be, sick as the adults. That's they, true. Right. And they tend to be older, like in, in like the, the 10, 11, 12, you know, that. Are, that's are you age. scared of your parents possibly getting COVID? At no. All? No. I never really Why liked not? my parents. Okay. In okay. fact, when I, when I had the COVID scare, I coughed on them before I told them. Oh, well, that's just plain attempted murder. But that's fine. Oh. <laughs> and did murder but, trying to speed up the inheritance? Whatever you want to don't put labels on things. Uh, yeah, they're gonna label everything. Uh, am I scared of them getting it? No, I think they're more worried than I am because they're vaccinated, so I'm okay with it. You know, Janine, uh, are you scared that your if your parents get it, 
you're they, worried. They are both vaccinated too. So that's good. So you're not right? worried about them if, getting it. I'm not. No, well, they're not worried about getting it. Are and you worried kind of, about them getting it? That was kind of the not original really. point, though, wasn't it? That Why? we we vaccinated. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just. No, you're right. You guys are great. I'm right. You're wrong. That, right. Uh, so you're not scared of your parents getting it? Like, you do you mean like? Like, if they get it, you're not worried about them being sick. Not really. Why? Because they both don't have underlying conditions. Well, your dad. That. Smokes. Well, he smokes, but you know he's a goner anyway. <laughs> But you said they were vaccinated, right? Right. So does that help your your you're not as worried as if they were unvaccinated? I mean, if they say what's true is true, which is if you get it, you won't get as sick, then that's it, right? So you're you feel better that they're vaccinated. I guess for their sake. But like they're not, but here's the thing though they're not scared of getting it. Are okay. you scared of your parents getting it? They're both vaccinated, so that's a I'm surprise. scared. They are, yeah, both of them. I didn't think your dad would be. Yeah, me neither. But he is. Um, but I don't want them to get it. If I would, I would be. If my mom got it, I'd be scared because she's, you know, got some health issues. But well, um, she smoked. So did my dad. She smoked, and she also produced two shitty children. So she's got right. A lot so did my dad. <laughs> <laughs> but I'd be I'd be scared if they got it, vaccinated or not. Vaccinated, of course, helps. But they do have they they are older. They're in their late sixties, and they, they, you know, they have health health concerns. So I would still be scared. But vaccination definitely helps me not worry as much. I'm just saying, like, when are you not going to be scared? Oh, it's the, when I'm in the ground. OK, <laughs> no, I'm not scared all the time. I just my whole thing to sum up my whole thing. No, I, is, I knew. Let's why are you do, asking is, me that? Let's why are you do, asking me that? OK, no, 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 no. My whole thing on vaccines and masks and all this is why not just let's do whatever we can to stop this thing. Why are we aren't we just doing that? We have. No, some of us have. Not all of us have. And that's why it hasn't stopped. He's talking about me. I'm no, I'm not. I'm not. Because you haven't spread. Even I'm though I haven't about, gotten it. I'm, that's why I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about 99% of people that are in the hospitals aren't vaccinated. Or 97% of people that are in the hospitals with COVID are unvaccinated. Want to check that number? 97% is the number. It was a couple of weeks ago. I don't know if it's. I don't know what it is today, but 97% two weeks ago was the number. Yep. So I'm just saying, like, if we all just got on board and just did what we had to do and just sucked it up for a couple of months. We already we did that. Could've... That's the whole thing. That's the whole but thing, we, though. We didn't. The vaccine came out. Everybody went. Half the country went. Nope. Half the country went. Yep. If everybody went. Yep. We'd probably be out of this already. No, I think it's more than half are vaccinated now. Uh, what, yeah. At the beginning. Now more people have, have gotten it. Sure. Yeah. But right out of the gate, half the people. No, half the people. went. Yes. Roughly. Well, some people wanted to wait six months just to see what happened. There's nothing wrong with that. To their friend who got it first. <laughs> yeah, but there's still uh, some people. But some people still... are grateful people like you are around, Frank. So that we Right, exactly. Kinda... What, when did I get it? I got it April or May. Thank you. Thank you. Let's June, July, the... August, September. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Check in with me in a month or two. <laughs> I'm still here. I'll answer your question. The greatest... Mm -mm. The greatest oh God, this is a long one. motivation for Janine Fired to up. get vaccinated is you wearing Fired a up. Trump hat. That is oh, all right. It. So if I wear the Trump hat, what you get? Nothing to do with her own. I'm just saying, if she gets it, it is going to have one to two percent to do with her own personal health and ninety eight percent to do with looking at you with a Trump hat on. That's I'd, that's I'd wear it. That's the bottom line. The only reason is because I care that everybody gets vaccinated, especially my friends, and I care. That we put an end to this thing to get back to normal. Wouldn't you want to get back to normal? Agree, but you're not you're not deterred at all by children being you know interfered with throughout all of this. Like we've kept the children you out of this care. for the most part. You don't care. I don't care. And, and, but the thing is, like, you don't have to because you don't have kids. So it's a. It's that a, is not the case. I have nieces. I. It's not like I, I don't know, care about but, kids. No, no. Nobody not, likes not, your nieces. Not that way. It's just like. 
I don't know. I understand I feel, there's development. I get that. I feel I very that. strongly about this. Like if you're extremely, if your niece was three, you know, and 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 there's, you know, how would you feel about it? It would suck. But I, first of all, I would I would do what the professionals are telling me to do because they know better. But that's the thing: the professionals and, aren't really saying, "Hey, we got to get three year olds in masks." Nobody's really saying that. She just came out with this out of nowhere. Yeah, but here's the thing: Why in From the UK do tell. the children not wear masks in school? I don't know. Right. Why? And again, reality. Janine is right. Once those kids get out of school, they go and they play with other kids. Like, what? So what are we even? They're doing? trying to control what they can control. They can't control where the kids. I know, but at this point, control. when when you have the most sensitive people vaccinated, or who or at least who want to be vaccinated, vaccinated. Where you know you know what I'm saying like where you know where where do you draw the yeah, line? But it's affecting everyone. It's not, and I'm not just saying getting I, sick. I, I I'm saying wearing the masks. I'm saying uh, social distancing. You can't go here. You can't go there. It's not just about also you know who's getting sick and who isn't, who's unvaccinated, who isn't. It's affecting businesses and it's affecting everything that this thing isn't done with yet. This thing I, should be done by now. We I should agree. be done with it. I agree, but I think it's different when it comes to kids. If we're talking about yeah, adults, yeah, we shouldn't have even got here yet. If uh, we're talking about adults, I'm with you. They should be wearing masks, getting vaccines. They should be sticking fingers up their asses if it'll help. You know, call people daddy and whatever it is. You know, fine. Uh, but when it comes to kids, you know, it's a little bit. It's a little bit different. But well, I will say this, and 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 uh, let me leave you, everybody with this. Oh God! We're all worried about our kids, and Janine, rightfully so, and I am too. But let's not forget that there was a generation of children in this country that literally, when an alarm went off, had to hide under their desks for fear that fucking Russia was going to blow us up, and they had to go into bomb shelters and live with that. That's a pretty fucking horrific uh, hand to be dealt to. So, you know, it's not like we haven't faced this sort of weird ass yeah. adversity before. We're talking it's, about putting a piece of cloth over their face. That's it's not. We're not putting gas masks on them. We're not marking them march through the street. We're just well, cover your mouth. It's basically cover your mouth. Cover That's your hard mouth. for a kid to do, though, for, for six hours at a clip. That's hard for them to do. I get that. I know. And I'm, I don't want this to happen. I don't want it to be this way. I don't. I don't want us to have to wear masks everywhere. I want to go back to normal. But Well, I'm sure you don't wear a mask. You don't have to wear a mask anywhere. Like, it's not you don't I wear, have to. I wear it when I go to the supermarket. I wear it you when do? I go into, do into any store. Yes. When really? I go into you do? stores, I wear it. Yeah. You're a nice person than I am. I, I, don't, I know I don't have to, and I don't fault anybody if they're not wearing the mask anymore because you don't have to. I get it. I wear it because I just, I want, you know, I just want it, to, I just want it all to end already. I just want it to be back to normal. Yeah. I want it to be 100% but like it was two years ago. Here's the thing, though. What more is it going to take? What more is it going to take? Because when it was 10%, the positivity rate, we didn't have to do this. But now it's 4%, and this is what we have to do to our kids. That's where I draw the line. What's 4% and 10%? Uh, positivity rate. Cases, the amount of cases. So, like, you know, it's like, like, but, like, that's the whole thing. At first, it was a like, big number. No, it's not. 4% is nothing. It's nothing. Four percent is nothing. Of the four percent of the population, is a big number. It's not, it, I'm talking about New York State, but still, that's nothing. When it was, um, what was it, fifty-three percent or whatever it was, yeah, that's a different story. But there's, there's, it's just, it's four percent. That's a small number. Do you get that the is. urge, Janine, to... Okay, I don't wear a mask in any Punch someone store. in the face? Go ahead. <laughs> is that I me? don't wear a mask in any store. Nope. Do you know the okay. one store I feel... I, I sometimes feel like maybe I should put a mask on before I go in here. What? It's fucking CVS. Oh, because of sick people. Yeah. I feel like maybe maybe masks in CVSs and Walgreens and shit should be probably mandated, period, end of sentence, forever, and all <laughs> being of all time. Like... Feels like that's probably the place to fucking put one of those things on. Oh, and I just did the math. In case you want to sinus infection, there's 20 million people in New York State. Four percent of that is 800,000. 
It's a big number. No, that can't be right. There's not 800,000 cases of COVID right now. That's 4% of 20 million. Well, no, they do it differently. Oops. Yeah, the rolling seven day average, whatever the fuck it is. Well, yeah. I don't know. You gave me a number four percent of New of New York State. That's what I did. If it's wrong, tell me it's wrong. So let me ask you a question. Would you be happy with a four percent raise or would you be happier with a twenty or thirty percent raise? Because I'd be happy with a million percent raise, but that's not the point. It's not a, we're not okay. talking raises, we're talking right. deaths or because when you hear like, Oh, I'm getting a four percent raise, you're like, oh, that's nothing. But when you hear twenty or thirty, you're like, okay, maybe that's a little yeah, bit better. But- Let's get into let's let's talk relativity. In terms of my raise, yeah, it might be peanuts. But in terms of eight hundred thousand people, four percent is a big number. All right. It's not eight hundred thousand New Yorkers no. is a big number. It, it, wait, all right. Here's the here's the st- actual statistics. You think I can read that, um, Daddy? I can't see it. Will you stop it? Um, here. Ooh, nice. Zoom in. These are Can you zoom in more. These are seven. Nice. There you go. Seven day average rolling numbers right now. September 10th is a couple days ago. There's 1,500 this is cases. In where? The... This is in New York State for everybody that's State. watching or listening. It's 1,500, 1,500 cases. Damn, that's a lot. There's there. If we go to the last uh, today. There's 14, 8, oh, let's go to yesterday when they have, like, the new case numbers. There's 1,631, seven-day average. There was 3,000 new cases yesterday. You're talking about 4,000, you know, I mean, this is, and by the way, the seven-day average is just to give you an idea of how many people are coming off of it, you know, cured or, uh, you know, coming, whatever you say, getting over it, and then how many new cases are actually, you know, are actually happening. That's not a lot of people. It is when you when it's in one day. In twenty, but out of twenty million, you know, the, you're talking about a very small, small, tiny number. Yeah, but it's three thousand a day. It's not in in a month. This is every day three thousand people. That's twenty one thousand people in a week. I just think that the amount of mitigation you have, the people that do still wear masks, the people that do keep away from one another, the people that are vaccinated. I'm all for that. That's why you're not seeing these huge, uh, you know, huge numbers. Right. So you're giving credit to all those steps being taken. I mean, here in in January of this year, there was a rolling average of 6,000 cases a day and almost 6,000 new cases per day. I mean, those are crazy numbers to be concerned with. Not this. It's still concerning. Now I understand if if it starts. It may to be shoot less again, than that. If it starts to shoot up again, I completely get it. But but I look, mean, it did shoot up. You see, in June it was very low, and then it went up in the air. Yes, July, gonna... August, September. Oh, it's yeah. never going to go away. That's, That's the, thing. the whole thing. Doesn't that weird you out? Okay, let's look at June twenty eighth. There was one hundred and eighty two cases. How did this not go the fuck away? That doesn't make sense to me. Um. July 4th. You know, super spreaders. Yeah, you're kind of right, because a couple of weeks after July 4th, there was 500 cases. <laughs> I don't know. We yeah. don't have the answers the doctors do. Doctor, you know, those doctor. those people who have, you know, 4th of July parties. They're assholes. The <laughs> They're the problem. Those jerks. This was a super long episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, anything else? I, I, I will say. We probably should have ended with Norm McDonald. I, I will say, Janine's got a point. This this governor's coming in and putting this out there, and there's no, with 1,500 cases in the state, there is no significant evidence that this really needs to be done to three-year-olds right now. Nope. And this is coming from a guy that is pro-vaccine, you know. Come on, you're not pro-vaccine. Well, I wouldn't say pro-vaccine, but. I <laughs> Why aren't you pro-vaccine? I got the vaccine. No, I wish everybody got it, would but get he's it. not pushing it, right? I, I am not pushing it. I could care less, and, and I do believe that the people that are dying in the, in the hospital that are unvaccinated, natural selection, my friends, natural selection. There you go. Especially the radio hosts, specifically the radio hosts. That's true. I've said my, I'm good. <laughs> All right, good. Everybody good. I am good. Good as it gets. He's like and subscribe. 
I am not pissed at you. I think you guys have kept this civil. He's gonna really—he's gonna call me. Go call me the c word. I would never. He's definitely gonna do that. I would definitely. And if not, well, he's awake while he's sleeping tonight. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. I I want to hear. See, my thing is, I want to hear the other side's point of view. I want to know. I want to know how dumb you are. I want to hear how dumb I am. I want to hear if if it's me. No, me, me. Frank, now that we see the number fifteen hundred, do you think three-year-olds at daycare need to fucking wear a mask with fifteen hundred cases in the entire state of twenty million people? I think I don't know. I don't know if they do. If they're telling me they do, come on. I don't know that numbers aren't. It's not just about the numbers, too. It's not just about how many cases there are. It's how how fast it'll spread. How fast it'll go up. How fast it'll go down. I don't know these numbers. I don't I'll know these things. If it's starting to spread like wildfire, we're getting up to five thousand cases a day. You want to slap masks on everybody again? Okay, I'll I'll listen. I won't. You know, I'm not saying we should do it, but I'll be more open to it than when it's yeah, fifteen hundred out put, of twenty million. I don't want to put kids masks on kids. I don't. I think that's that's terrible. I. I what don't if we have... had to put a mask on your dog? What it would then? I think that'd be adorable. <laughs> All right, we'll leave it there, everybody. Uh, thanks for watching and listening. Appreciate that so much. Grab some Jumpstar coffee for yourself. Don't forget, you get the uh, 15% off. When you use the promo code AOA15, and that does not affect the 50% that's going to go over to the Navy SEAL Foundation, of course, to support the great Navy SEALs of our nation and their five pillars of support, which is strength, resilience, health, education, and community. I got the espresso blend, which I cannot wait to break open. I'm still working on my uh, dark roast right now. Oh, it's Frank is holding up. And uh, J-Sabs is yawning. So there you go. (laughs) You need some jumpstart, J-Sabs. You do need some. I need a whole lot of things. Yeah. Um, Link in the description below. Banner at anthonyiron.com. Have a great one.